Yeah, dude. There we go. Gorecast. You are listening to Gorecast, you idiot. Andrew, what's up, dude? What's Take good? two. We tried yeah. it. We, we did it twice. We did it twice, dude. <laughs> I can dap up again. Hell yeah, let's dap up again. That was a better dap, too. Yeah. Yeah, good to see you, buddy. Second time's a charm. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming through, dude. No problem. It's good to have a fellow a fellow metal metal guy that's doing comedy out here. Yeah. You know I what thought, I mean? I thought I was the only one for a long time going to all these concerts by myself and stuff. Yeah. And uh, Now we have a couple. There's a little crew of us, dude. There's me, you, Zach Black. I yeah. think Joey is a... Uh, I think uh, Joey Smith, right, uh, is also a metalcore guy. Yeah, yeah, Darian Irwin. Darian. Um, I went to a concert with Matt Bamwar, but that was like an emo show. Okay. Uh, same with Brent Reed. We saw Free Throw. Nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, Michael Ridley, also a, yeah. a, a metal veteran. Yeah. An old so school, old school metal kid. Trying to get a group of us to go to some shows and stuff. Dude, we should do our own show. Somebody, one of you guys, should do a show where it's like the metal kids, fucking, you know. Yeah, yeah, doing yeah. comedy. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be kind of that would be a niche. That's a niche. It, right? it, it, it is a niche. <laughs> uh, I, I think it would do well in San Antonio. San Antonio's yeah, got yeah. a pretty good metal scene. You're right. Like yeah. half of the half the people in San Antonio are like Mexican dudes that love metal. That's yeah. like literally half. You're walking. You're in the mall in San Antonio, and it's like dudes with Suicide Silence shirts on, and you're yeah. like, sick. Okay, cool. These are my. Like when I'm in San Antonio, I'm like, these are my people. Dude, you I'll, know what I mean? Yeah, I'll show up to like the LOL in San Antonio, and they have that movie theater by there, and they'll just be like metalcore playing, like, yeah. just outside. I'm like, oh, in public. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. do it. Can I get a mocha? Um, you know, <laughs> extra hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's like yeah. in Starbucks and shit. No, it's not that mainstream yet. But yeah, dude, metal's like as mainstream as it's ever been right now. I feel like, or as mainstream as it's been in my lifetime. Yeah, now. yeah. Because like it's like some of these bands like are blowing the fuck up yeah like N lorna shore and you know what i mean like, yeah knocked loose played coachella exactly yeah that's like huge insane. shit happening oh yeah, yeah. It, well it's weird because like you, you would think like the more mellow stuff would get like bigger first but it seems right. like it was like the opposite's true and like even i forget what the band is because like i don't listen to a lot of these bands like like that are huge like yeah code orange and knocked loose and yeah like I've heard it and and you know it's my opinion on on it doesn't matter but it's just not in my rotation yeah. but I know that they're like big and they do really good thing they bring a lot of eyeballs to like yeah you know what I mean like all these uh other other bands that I do listen to and so it's like um but like one of them I forget what their fucking name is right now it's another one of those like kind of hardcore bands but they um they played on like Jimmy Kimmel or some shit, or like one of the uh, like one of the, like the Tonight Show or something. Turnstile, like yeah. Turnstile, yeah. yeah. But they're like not a hard. They sound like Silver Sun pickups now. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I remember, I went and checked them out because they were on. Like somebody's like, dude, Turnstile. They're a hardcore band. They're on Jimmy Fallon. I went and listened to it, and I was like, this is fucking yeah. Silver Sun pickups. Sh yeah, shoegazy rock stuff. What? Well, is and yeah. then you go back to their old shit, and it's like. You know, more fucking hardcore shit. Yeah, yeah, like like bring me the horizon. But they're they're, so. they're bringing the the heavy stuff back. Yeah. But now it's got like Gen Z titles for songs where <laughs> half of the letters are capitalized in the middle for some reason. What? Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, like their song Lost, it's like like capital L, lowercase O, capital S. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like the meme thing. Yeah, and oh. like like it's not it's not a bad song, but it's that kind of reminds like, me of like the Doctor Acula era. Yeah, like the silly MySpace metal era. You know what I mean, where yeah. things were funny, like back when metal metal had more of a sense of humor. Yeah, it's kind of lost it. I feel like, and now it's like trying to. It's kind of try getting it back. There's like, but like you know, metal takes itself way too seriously sometimes. Yeah, like yeah. dudes in metal. I mean, that's why I'm doing all the shit I'm doing out here because it's like, it's just kind of funny to me. Yeah, like even what I do is funny. Like if I get too high, yeah, and I think about like what. It, like going on stage in tight pants and like banging my head and like jumping up and down to this like heavy music i'm like this is funny like there's yeah. funny here yeah yeah you yeah know? i yeah. wish i think it'd be cool to do like a comedy show kind of like what i did at that festival thing where i had the three bands in the middle yeah but if it was like if there was a way that you could get a crowd full of like only metal fans yeah. to go to just a comedy show yeah so that you could make fun of them and make fun of metal and make fun of like 
you know, sh the whole music industry. Yeah. And because most of those jokes would go over people's heads, like in a general audience. Yes. But there could be like a special little niche for like metalhead comedy shows where you can like make fun of people going like, good set, bro. Or yeah. like do jokes about that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. I tried having a couple jokes about just some like some stuff a couple of metal bands went through, but because nobody knew the band, nobody right. gave a shit. Yeah. Exactly. Like the make them suffer they kicked out their female vocalist because she sexually assaulted a man really yeah see i didn't know about this is that true yeah. all right yeah. look, jamie pull that up. i'm just kidding tony tony's dude tony is uh tony is like jamie 5.0 dude yeah 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 dude tony pull that up dude i was like look there's nothing more metal than a chick like raping a guy like, you know what i mean <laughs> 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 that is pretty metal dude you're right. I was, like, that is I was like, he should be in the van. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, uh, they fucking. Did you see they kicked the uh, CJ out of Thy Art Is Murder for saying some some shit too? Yeah, yeah, I think it which was... I thought was pretty metal and funny. Like it was pretty spot on. But yeah, I guess yeah. you you can't come at the trans community yeah. that way. Or really, it's that you can't come at woke white parents. Yeah, like that. <laughs> well, the, I mean, the, that's like most of the metal fans is just the kids of woke white parents, I guess. Mm -hmm. that's what i was talking about too like that's what i was getting at before we were before we started the podcast was like that's where a lot of the musicians are coming from nowadays like when we we're comparing like comedians roughing it living in their car just to bet it all on comedy like yeah. you don't see that as much with with like rock and roll and shit anymore yeah yeah like it's kids from fuck fucking suburban neighborhoods and shit well i i mean uh, i i'm not you know, producing music. I never have. I used to play guitar, but I don't produce music. But, like, there was this band I was listening to, Hollower, and it was just, like, two guys in their garage studio from Atlanta, Georgia. Nice. And I'm like, it, it's almost like the, the better way to get your stuff out there is to be able to afford a home studio. So you almost, right. like, have to have a <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, like, dudes that, like, are they tech bros that are doing, like, they're doing grungy math rock out of their, out of their you know, four five six hundred thousand dollar house that they bought you know yeah 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 because it's like even those guys that are doing like the trashier sound and like just two guys in a garage it's like those dudes either live in it's either their mom's garage or you know yeah. they are upper middle class people that can afford a fucking you know yeah, garage. yeah it's not like some dude that's like you know what i'm gonna just couch surf and like fucking the band's gonna make it one day like you know, yeah my music is i believe in my music like comedians are like that like yeah. they're like the rock stars to me they're i look i spend a lot of time around rock stars yeah and around you know not really but just you know people yeah. in metal and it's like some of the comedians are more like roughing it like a fucking rock star than yeah than some of the a lot of the metal kids who's like their mom bought their rig for them yeah or whatever yeah. you know like well, like I mean, something that I wished was in comedy that's in music. I think it's easier to tell in music if somebody sucks at playing guitar. We've talked about that, yeah, yeah. like a lot. Like I love that about like even transitioning from, yeah, like doing them. Well, I'm still doing both, but yeah. it's like, and I'm, I'm basically like, you know, I'm, I'm in. I feel like I'm grad. I'm, I've graduated from high school in metal. I've yeah. graduated from high school, and I'm like a freshman in college now because yeah. we went on a big tour with a big band. So it's like, yeah, you know what, you know how, you know what I'm saying? Like you're yeah, like, yeah. I'm at the top, and yeah. then you fucking go to the new, go to college, and then you're like a fucking no, a freshman again, yeah, right? And yeah. so it's kind of like that. That's how I, I feel a little bit. <clears throat> and then with comedy, it's like I'm starting at kindergarten. Yeah, you know what I mean, and and I just made it through my first year of kindergarten, K yeah. through twelve. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, and so, but but from that in that year, I've I don't know, I've been humbled a lot. You know what I mean? Like oh, it yeah, does yeah. a lot for you. I feel like more musicians should have to go to open mics as boot camp to be like, no, 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 remember that you suck. Yeah, and it gets it it's like, I mean, people are in very uh, much worse situations it also attracts like a lot of mental illness like, yeah, i yeah. guess if you're like totally mentally ill it's harder to play guitar than it is to get on stage yeah yeah <laughs> and, and to just talk i don't know your if you're mentally ill you're sitting in the room i know a lot of mentally ill guitarists <laughs> <laughs> i know a lot of mentally ill I was, tony's one of them no i'm just kidding tony's one of the most sane guitarists out there but no i know a lot of fucking psychopaths in the music industry so i don't think that's I don't think that's exclusive to either 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 art form. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> but I do think it's like, yeah, it's like the 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 comedians at least. I don't know. I feel like there's more delusion 
in music than yeah. there is in comedy because of that reason. Maybe there might yeah. be. I should say I think there I think there might be more delusion in music than there is comedy because there's more um, like yes men and there's more you know your mom is telling you good job you know if yeah and I think more people more parents support kids doing music now than they ever have like yeah. back then there was like this chip on your shoulder like yeah. i just had michael gonzalez in here yeah from kill tony's yeah kill tony's band and he was telling me about how his family was like okay well like what else are you gonna do you know what i mean but not a lot of people have that story like my parents i'm like could you support me a little less yeah mom and dad you know like i need like i need something to be funny about i can't you know what i mean you guys yeah. can you guys like can we can you guys beat me now yeah like now as a 30 year 32 year old man can you yeah. beat me now so i can be like my parents beat me last week yeah you know what I mean? yeah because yeah. i asked them to because i'm not i'm not funny enough <laughs> can you beat the funny into me like yeah i, I don't know because i mean i also know comedians that like intentionally make their life worse because they're like, oh, well, I'm funnier when I'm miserable. Ooh, I feel like I've seen, I feel like I've started to see some of that. Maybe. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll like dump their girlfriend, they'll like. Their loving, love. beautiful girlfriend that they could have yeah, started their I mean, life with. I, I've heard shit like, oh, and the comedy gods will repay me. And it's like, dude, oh that my is, God that's is, not how. That is crazy. That's not how this works. <laughs> That is absolutely like like j j just like a a heads up for like the rest of the pile. I'm like an anti motivational person. <laughs> yeah, dude. Nice. If, if you uh, if, if most of the comics we've had on here are if, if spite motivates you, I'm about to say some shit that's like, oh, well, I'll fucking show this guy. Yeah. Um, if I can't talk you out of it, you probably should do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, talk, talk me out of talk people out of doing comedy. That's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Cause, I mean, it's one thing to like, like try it as like a hobby. It also like depends on what you're going for. Cause like you know, I know some you know buddies of mine that have like really good day jobs, and they're like, look, I just love being around comedians. I like producing right. shows. Work is boring. Yeah. People at work are boring. Or yeah. I know I'm not gonna like do this for a living, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, now I'm not gonna judge you. Like you're giving it all right. to this but when you're like living out of your car and you're like oh this is my only thing and it's like you only talk about your dick yeah you run out of steam after like 10 minutes and then you ask them oh how long have you been doing comedy they're like oh seven years and it's like dude yeah how long rough. have you been doing it uh eight and a half eight and a half okay. and i just got to a point where i don't need a regular job but that's not all from comedy i've learned to like video edit yeah and then occasionally i work these merch gigs you do stuff for other comics yeah. Nice. Like uh, stand up clips and yeah, stand up clips, clips, podcast clips. Like... clips. Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, so we're kind of in the. Between all of those, it's like I'm still poor, but I don't have a boss. Right. So and you now... you're on your own time, which is invaluable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, exactly. it's fantastic. Yeah. But now it's like I'm horribly busy and it's like, and I don't have a job. I'm like, oh, this is not good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's I'm... like you're, yeah, yeah. I was just talking to Tony about that. It's like you're, my plate is perpetually full. Like, I'm only clearing shit off to make room for this pile of shit over here that needs to be scooped onto it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, and for me, I, you know, it's not to complain. Like, I have the best life ever. Yeah. I fucking take videos of food for a living. And then, yeah. No and, shit. And then I make podcasts to keep myself sane. Yeah. And I do stand up at night. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I do the band thing. The band thing, people are like, how do you do it all? And it's like, dude, it, a lot of people just don't understand. Being in a band, it's like it takes waiting. It yeah. takes a lot of waiting. You're waiting for the guitars to get their shit done. Yeah. And then sometimes they're waiting for me to get my shit done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so there's a lot of time. There's a lot of downtime. Yeah. You're waiting for tours to get booked. And it's yeah. like, we're not, if the band blows up and I don't have, you know, like I don't have time to do a certain thing, then we'll assess that when it happens. You yeah. know, but it's like my whole life, my whole career in music, it's been like a lot of waiting time and like all that, you know? So it's yeah. like, it's, it's nice to have other things to keep me creatively going yeah yeah you know what i mean but but yeah the uh i'm not sure where i was going with that but um but yeah the my plate is like perpetually full of shit so it's like yeah. i like yesterday i was like trying to get a bunch of client stuff done keep keep everybody happy and then i have you know i got i got to pull a michael ridley clip after this way i have my podcast today so but i feel like if i don't have that then you run into this thing that i feel like maybe you you feel where you're like I'm stressed out even though I don't have a boss and I don't have, you know, I'm on my own time. Yeah. But there's all this stuff that I want to do over here and then there's this stuff that I have to do and get done over here. And yeah. then it's like – and then I have to also, like, take time to, like, fucking – just lay down for just a minute yeah yeah and like breathe and like be a human and go take on a date with my girlfriend or something yeah you know what i mean yeah, and then yeah. like finding the balance is tough yeah how do you do that or what have you been doing recently 
Uh, finding a balance. I mean, yeah, I, have, I have no idea. I'm still working on that. Well, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm really upfront. Yeah. Uh, like like with my girlfriend, I'm like, hey, like I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is how I'm gonna make my money, and like, like, like women make their own money now. You're like, I'm poor, but I'm hot. Yeah, <laughs> look <laughs> at me, and, and I'm funny. So like, it also takes like you kind of like have to believe in this. Yeah, because this is all I'm going to do. You're like, I'm poor, but I, I'm kind of a hot Frankie Muniz. Okay, <laughs> I'm, kind <of> a- <laughs> I'm kind of a hot Frankie Muniz if he was funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You kind of have a Frankie Muniz look to you, dude. I just look like any white guy. <laughs> I've gotten uh, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day a lot. Oh, I didn't see that until now. Yeah. yeah. I've gotten Josh Peck a lot. Okay. Uh, and I used to be fat, so I've Oh, like, you were like, really followed. Josh Peckin back then. Yeah. Okay. I-, I never got to like his size back in the day, but I was chubbier. He was a big boy, dude. Yes. Let's pull up the Josh Peck transformation, dude. Let's see let's see what he what let's see a, a before and after. But yeah, you do kind of look like a lot of white men, dude. Straight yeah. white men, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. It's a good look. Pretty much a blank slate. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever people want me to be. Yeah. They're like, oh, my interests are your interests, and I'm like, yeah, no, I know <laughs> nothing about sports. Yeah. I know. Same. I'm, I'm, I, I'm I haven't worst. seen a lot of movies. I'm working on my sports thing. Yeah. Because I live here now, and people like sports. I'm like. You know, it's kind of fun. Look, they look like they're having so much fun. I'm yeah. like, I want, I got FOMO. I'm like, I want to be stoked on a football game. I mean, the fantasy football thing's a bit much. Oh, damn. Look at that, dude. Yeah. Talk about being a, a chubby kid and just being fucking. He doesn't even have the extra skin. He got must have got it snipped up or just did it yeah, yeah. natural. Oh, he's got a little bit on the right. So you can kind of see it. Is Damn. it possible to send a picture? I have a picture of me. From yeah, you can airdrop. Yeah, airdrop it oh, to. I don't have an iPhone. Oh, you don't have an iPhone? Oh. Yeah. Wah, wah. Yeah. Yep. I get that a lot. Yeah. You can. Uh, you can DM it to me. Do you have my phone number? Uh, no, no, not yet. But I'll just. Uh, I'll shoot the message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Send it to me on Instagram, and I'll. Uh, I'll send it to him. Yeah. Um. Have you found that like you have to dress a certain way when you're on stage or something so that people. I don't know, are more open to hear your jokes because I've experimented with some of that. Like at first I was going up with my hair down and yeah. a hat on, like yeah. backwards. And like I don't know if that's just such a like typical look here that like people are like, ah, oh, another one of these fucking, you know, dorks with their hat on backwards and a long hair. Or or what? Or if people or if it's like too cool of a look or something. And yeah. people like but I feel like they hate me more when I have my hair down. So yeah. lately I've been uh bunning it back and yeah. and I don't want to be the guy with the man bun. Yeah. So I stick it through like a trucker hat. Yeah. And I yeah. wear the trucker hat forward. Yeah. And I know this sounds crazy, but like people that don't get it, it's like that first second when you get on stage, I feel like it's kind of important. They just start judging you right away. They're like, this guy's big, tall, skinny, fat. Like you know what I mean? Like in yeah, their head yeah. subconsciously they start kind of going through that. And I feel like I've gotten my my biggest, you know, my best moments or whatever of people listening and paying attention to me when I don't have my like hair down, which is so weird. I don't know. Maybe I should keep trying it back and forth, but it's like people hate me when I have my hair down and they don't want to listen to me talk. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I recently just started wearing uh, just band t-shirts Yeah, on stage. That's, that's kind of sick because nobody does that. Yeah. It's like I, your thing. I, I was wearing uh, just like solid color V-necks before. Uh-huh. Oh, that's that's too hot, dude. It is. That's too it's hot. It's real. Like, dude, I don't. <laughs> bro, like- once I find this picture of me in high school, I think everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody will get it. God, I keep bringing it up. It's all right. Never... We're we're letting the people know that we don't prep for this shit. You know. Yeah, I mean? yeah. Just, we raw dog these fucking podcasts. Dude. <laughs> yeah. So what was it? Uh, the band he's working out for you though. Well, I feel well. They're a looser fit. Yeah. So, yeah. I've been, yeah. That's another thing too. I always thought I, I feel like a fat person because I used to be bigger too. I used to weigh like two, walk around two thirty. Yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah. I got and, up to two twenty. Yeah, and that did not look good. That looked super fat on me. And so, like now, I feel like I need to like fatten my image. I wear like a big giant oversized uh, Levi's yeah. hoodie. Like the, just whatever I can do. I'm like, babe, do I look fat and awkward and funny? You know? And she's yeah, like, yeah. No. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. No. Good luck. Have a good set or whatever you're gonna go do. You know. Yeah. So I think like it's a more relaxed look. Yeah. Uh, and then I tend to have like edgier material, so I think yeah. if I look more relaxed and like look more fun, and then you throw a rape joke in there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that that's not gonna you know 
come off as harshly or whatever. Right. I you know if I look like this like hot preppy boy. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, it's not that hot chicks are crazy. It's that the only crazy chicks we talk to are the hot ones. They're like, fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I if I look like a you know like a douchebag or whatever. They're like, I, this is Brock, whatever that fucking yeah. the the rapist dude. From, yeah, Brett Brock. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it, I'm like, hey, it's, uh, they're ugly chicks that are crazy too, but they're homeless. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's they're like, just like it, stop. It, yeah, yeah. But you know, if I wear something looser, and then uh, m- most of the bands, you know, obviously most people don't know. Um, but every once in a while, somebody goes like, "Oh, I know that band." Yeah, and 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 that's always like cool. Like I feel like if I saw a comedian I liked. And they were wearing like a band T-shirt. Oh, fuck yeah, like a Black Dahlia shirt or something. Yeah, yeah, You're like yeah. sick. Yeah, that's going to attract. I mean, once you're, you know, if you get a clip that goes mega, yeah. or something, and a bunch of metal kids see it, then you have like a niche of people that are, fu- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all those hardcore Keem fu- fans are going to like you or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because you're funny and you have the metal shirt. You know. Yeah. But- I had a clip get like thirty thousand likes when I was wearing a Spirit Box T-shirt. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. But it took like. 30,000 people for the for, 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 for one, one person. person. <laughs> like, Sick. I love that. I love yeah. Spirit Box. I mean, it just says like SB in the corner. It's mm-hmm. like one of their like tie-dye it's, shirts. It's one like, of the low-key branded yeah. ones. Yeah, I try to not wear something totally big and distracting on stage. Yeah. Because, I mean, if I wore something like this and like they're like moose blood, like what the hell? People are just going to be thinking about that the whole time you're talking yeah. and shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's a really heavy name for actually like how light indie rock that they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, when did you get into doing stand up? How did you start doing it? Oh, I I always like had like stories and like jokes and stuff in high school. And then one day I had a friend ask me, he's like, Hey, are you depressed? <laughs> and I was like, Finally. Yeah. And, you know, I've been I feel like I've been crying out like this whole time. <laughs> you know, I was like, How could you tell? And he's like, Oh, I saw this thing that said like most comedians are depressed. And that's when I first like put it is like, Oh, like that's like a thing I can do. Yeah. So I went to a couple like open mics during the summer when I was like 19, but didn't really really get into it till I was 21. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then since then, it's like, oh, I I get along with these people, and like it it helped me like talk to people a lot. I was very anxious, very shy. Yeah. Um. Had a hard time understanding people. Like when they were talking to me, I had to like watch a bunch of YouTube videos on like how to talk to people. Uh, really? Yeah. Charisma on command. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of gay, dude. Uh, dude, <laughs> dude, like it sucks, dude. It sucks, yeah. but like, it helped. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, you had to take the fucking Will Smith Hitch class to fucking learn how to just make friends with bros. <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> and, and and yeah, like I I caved one time. It was like like oh like how to like like talk to women or whatever. Uh-huh. And this like you know pickup artist is like, okay, so watch comedy specials on Netflix. No way. And use their jokes in conversation. And I'm sitting there like, man, I'm screwed. I'm so screwed. I was like, I make the jokes. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait, so my jokes just suck? That was the first time you realized your jokes sucked? Well, it's like, wait a minute. So the jokes I've been trying that I've been writing that aren't working, that's not what I'm supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. But, like, uh, my my problem was is that, like, when people – talk to me I, I tend to take it like literally at first it takes me a second to like realize like oh no like this person's joking mm-hmm. or why is somebody saying this to me so like you know growing up you get told like hey if you like a girl ask her out worst thing she's gonna do is say no uh but girls don't like say no they'll say something like i'm busy <laughs> so for the longest time i just thought women were really busy <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear to god dude and then I would, keep, for I, real? yeah. And then I would keep going after them. I'm like, oh well, if they're busy on Thursday, like, what about Friday? <laughs> I was like, I'm doing nothing with my life. I'm, I can't like, time for this, bro. I'm busy forever. Yeah, yeah. For you, yeah. I'm busy. When it comes to you, I'm busy all day, every day. Yeah, dude, dude, and, and dude, I, I shit, you know. And then the news is like, oh, the wage gap. Women have it hard. And I'm like, they do. <laughs> yeah, they're so busy. I'm like they're really. Busy. I don't know what they're doing constantly, <laughs> they're but like, they are they're, so they're, busy. <laughs> they're working two jobs. They're going to school. They're taking care of, like, sick grandparents. Well, one girl pulled the whole, like, oh, like, uh, 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 a family member of mine just died. And then I would, like, keep going after her. And, like, by the end of it, like, her whole family was dead. (laughs) You're like, how's your grandma? Or whatever. Like, she's like, my grandma's sick. And she's like, how's your grandma? And it's like, every yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, it's like, oh, now it's your uncle. I was like, I literally said, man, more death. (laughs) I just like wasn't getting it. It's like you for real. You weren't. You weren't even just being persistent. You were just like, 
Oh, really? That's so yeah. sad. Yeah, yeah. How does your whole family die? Yeah, the, dude. Like it was. Dude, you could have gotten catfish so easy back then. <laughs> like yeah. Like my grandma died. Send me two thousand dollars. You know. What I mean? Oh, I wouldn't send any money because I don't have any. <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So like that was that was like a huge problem, and it, it didn't. Uh, I finally snapped out of it because like. You know, another time I asked a girl out. Oh, oh, so before I get into that, I was seriously walking around thinking, no girls ever rejected me. They're just all terribly busy. <laughs> like that's, that is, it's the dumbest. That is crazy, dude. dude, dude so you have, your 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 brain was broken, dude. Oh yeah, it was. I I totally didn't understand. <laughs> that's like borderline autism, dude. Yeah, and and, and I thought that. Until and then I ask another girl, she says I'm busy, and I seriously thought, man, I wish the economy was better. <laughs> and that's when it got so ridiculous, I snapped out of it. Okay, I was like, wait a minute, like this is it. Wait a minute, these bitches aren't busy. Yeah, yeah. every girl I know is sitting on the couch looking at her phone. Yeah, yeah. These I was, girls aren't busy at all. I was like, yo, wait. I was like, the GDP has nothing about <laughs> <laughs> about going on dates. So then, uh, then I realized, like, oh yeah. Uh, how many people want to do something so bad they never do it? If somebody really wants to, they would. Uh, so then this uh, this girl was supposed to come out to a comedy show of mine. I was three years into comedy, still a virgin. Really? Yeah. How old? So 23? 24. Whoa. Yeah. That's late. 2018. Damn, late 9/11. Boomer, dude. Yeah. Look at you now, dude. Yeah. Look at yeah. you now, dude. Yeah. Um, so this girl was supposed to come to a show. It was like at 9.30. And she like went to the fair, and then she didn't come. Inviting chicks to see your your bad jokes three years into comedy, or were you killing? Uh, they they were doing well. I had like okay. all these like virgin jokes or whatever. Oh, nice. And okay. and nobody believed me. Um, so if you don't want people to think you're a virgin, tell as many people as possible, <laughs> and they'll be like, "There's no way <laughs> this guy's not fucking." There's yeah. no way. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a con, dude. Yeah, yeah. So I would go on stage, you know, like in shape, looking good, and be like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't get laid at all." <laughs> you know, I would say like the the average age people lose their virginity is seventeen, so I'm an above average guy. <laughs> Just like dumb stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But so, so what happened? The the girl. You said you invited a girl out. Yeah, I invited a girl. The show was at nine thirty. She was busy. She yeah, she didn't show up. <laughs> And then the next day she's like, oh, hey, sorry, like, like we were at the fair, we lost track of time. And like in my head, I'm thinking, even if you had like no idea how to tell time, you would have noticed the sun going down <laughs> and realized it was like getting late and that you should go to the show. And I just said, okay. She's like, what? And I'm like, oh, it's just another apology. She goes like, huh? And I'm like, look, if you really wanted to go, you would have. Right. You don't want to go. Yeah. Stop asking me. Yeah. And then because I stood up for myself, she was attracted to that. Oh. And then weird. she had sex with me. Oh, that was the first time. Yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah. Sweet. So you gaslit a girl into having sex with you for the first time, dude? Basically. <laughs> yeah. Sick, yeah. Dude. Not toxic at all. Dude. Well, well, because, you know, I mean, I was like, am I a nice person? It's like, oh, well, I just never could stand up for myself. Yeah. I uh, think a lot of guys deal with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A lot of the, especially. It seems like the virgin thing, and maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe you you can speak from your experience. But like after if after you wait for a long time, then your perception of everything gets all fucked up, right? Like your perspective on how to talk to women or whatever. Because I I have some friends that I'm like I don't know that they're a virgin. Yeah, but I like assume I should know, right? But I'm like uh, the easiest you know, sign is like if they still have like a twin size bed. That's like. The easiest as an adult, like yeah. in college, it's one thing to a twin, dude. Yeah, that's so small. Yeah, have you seen one recently? <laughs> they get they get smaller every year that we grow. Yeah, <laughs> they get smaller yeah. and smaller, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, because oh. like when I moved out of my parents' place, I had a twin size bed, and then yeah, and now like I, I like I helped like one guy move in uh, as a roommate, and he's had a twin bed. I'm like, okay, this guy's virgin. Damn, hundred percent. That's the giveaway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're putting a twin size bed into a moving truck for an adult man, <laughs> like you're, you you don't get laid. You're like he's never asked himself the question, "How am I gonna fit anyone else in here?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Damn. So that first time, did you did you nut instantly, or did you? Did oh you... no, I had performance anxiety. Did uh, you? Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. What was that like? What was that anxiety like? 
Oh, I'm. It's twenty four. Twenty four. Oh fuck. Yeah, yeah. Just like this, like uh, uh, you know, um, like b- because I was doing stand up, I'm able to like handle pressure very well. Yeah. But like, you can't fake a limp penis. <laughs> <laughs> so like all the other confidence things I can fake. Yeah. <laughs> but like that, like you can't pretend to have a hard dick. No. Um, and then there's the anxiety of like, how do I fuck? Right. Like yeah, you don't yeah. like. Yeah, I didn't know any of that. Let me yeah. put this on silent yeah, real quick. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I'll, I'll find the picture. Yeah, eventually. yeah, we'll find it at the end or something. Yeah. But so you were you were super you super anxious. Yeah, and then this girl, uh, you know, because she was also twenty four, uh, had never dealt with a guy not being able to get hard, and like that got in her head. Oh fuck. Yeah, and so she you was guys like, just both stressed out. Yeah, she was like trying to give me head, and like nothing was working. <sighs> And she's like, oh, are you even attracted to me? And I'm like. should have hit her with some jokes. Like, no, you're just really bad at this. Oh, <laughs> dude. And, like, I didn't realize, like, in the moment, like, just, like, how much power I had in the situation. Right. Because she's like, oh, are you even attracted to me? I was thinking, I was like, I was like, of course. Like, what do you think I'm trying to do? You think I'm just trying to figure out how long ugly chicks are willing to suck flash <laughs> <of penis?" laughs> Like. Yeah, you think this is a fucking Jane Goodall experiment? Of, yeah. Like. Like. Well, what kind of monster would I be? Let's see what happens when yeah. the ugly girl sucks a flaccid penis. Yeah. How long will it take her to yeah. get him to ejaculation? Yeah. Yeah. If I was like, <laughs> yeah, I thought, oh, I thought you would try harder. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you should have hit her with the jokes right there. Ah, uh, yeah, but no, like I was like terribly anxious and like yeah. like getting out in front of like, hey, like this is me, this isn't you. Yeah. Um, and you can in that moment put because. I feel like girls don't want to be the girl that takes some guy's virginity, really, right? Like, most of the time. That's, like, a weird big thing for them, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, because, I mean, I definitely got feelings immediately. Oh, yeah. Um, you nutted and you're like, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> like, like it changed It changed everything, because like, like, it was getting pretty late, and I didn't want to, like, think of myself as that different. I was, like, seriously, like, like in the middle of a bit. I'm like, oh, does sex change everything? Yeah. And then I had sex. I'm like, it does. Uh, yeah. like, like, You're like, fuck, my jokes are ruined. I, can't, I, my, I need to write an entirely new set now that I got pussy for the first time. My whole my whole set is riding on yeah. me being a virgin. I yeah. just fucked that up for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's mind fuck. Yeah, like, after, like, getting laid, like, like just, like, neurons connected for the first time that, like, had never connected before. I was like, oh, I like art now. Like, I bought, like, art pieces and, like, hung it on my wall. I'm like, I never did that. I had blank <laughs> walls my whole life. Um, Dude, that's so funny. I'm like, oh yeah, it's like it's like a it's a maturity thing. It's a very powerful thing, especially to get it that late. Like I can't even really remember how I acted. Yeah, I definitely I was 16, and I felt like uh, the coolest guy. You know, in, yeah. in my high school, I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if she went to a different high school, and she yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm banging some chick. Right? Nobody believed me, right? It's like, yeah, she's she goes to a different high school. You know what I mean? It sounds so fake. Oh, dude. <laughs> Dude, like in high school, there was this like like cute chick I was sitting next to, and she turns to me and she goes, "Andrew, who are you having sex with?" And like it wasn't if, it was who, and I was just honest. I was like nobody. And she goes, "You don't have to lie to me." Wow, dude. So nobody. So you're okay. I was in this weird spot where like nobody talked to me, but like also people thought I was fucking cool at the same time. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. Cause That's like crazy. that girl, I would have loved to have been like I. Right. I should have like realized. Should have said there. you. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. I. 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 I should have done right that. You right after this class. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, I was like nobody. She's like, I, just because like I'm a girl, you don't have to not talk to me about sex. And like it would be another eight years <laughs> after that. <laughs> Before I even got my I'm sorry, first I'm not kiss, laughing at you. It's just, no, like, like I'm it's, totally like, like it's it's uh, awesome perspective it. and experience that you don't <clears throat> hear about, especially because there's probably more people like that than we know of, or yeah. you know what I mean that talk than than talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of interesting to hear about. Oh, and I mean, like on on paper, everything should be great. I'm tall funny what was it dude <laughs> and so bro like, you just, your pheromones are off you smell like danger <laughs> my, I don't know what it is. <laughs> my parents have money like like, like <laughs> everything should have been like in my favor and like i still just you somehow... fumbled the bag repeatedly <laughs> oh dude just like in terms of like like uh you know cards you can get dealt in life i got a pretty good hand <laughs> yeah. i got like one of the best hands you can a get full house dude yeah and i somehow just like still just like fumbled the shit out of it <laughs> just messing it up do you remember like a, a good story of when you when you fucked it up when you fumbled the bag with a girl do you have a good one 
on deck? Um, like where it should have been a sure thing, and you like you just talked your your way out of it somehow. Oh, I mean, I probably did that a million times, like yeah. without without and realizing you just didn't it. Even know? Yeah, yeah. I like like there's no like specific instance. Yeah. I, well, much like much similar to you, I guess in that way, I've only had sex with four people in my life. Yeah, which is which a lot of a lot of it's, that's that's super weird. Yeah, that's weird now. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I've been with my girlfriend currently for ten years. That's so, that's awesome. So and we are she's amazing. But yeah. but it's like <clears throat> so I'm very inexperienced too yeah. when it comes to all that stuff. And it's like I probably have. It's funny because you started later than I did, but I probably have way less experience than you. You know what I mean? Uh, like just I mean, as far as di- we're, we're, we're still in the single digit club. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. go, dude. Let's <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but it's nice. I'm like my dick is clean. My shit's clean, baby. Oh, dude, there's <laughs> clean as a whistle. I've had so like my story to sex ratio is also just like way off. I have way too many stories for the amount of times that I've it's had actually sex. happened. Yeah. Yeah, because just weird things keep happening. Like the girl lost my virginity to, I ended up getting a fungal infection from. You did? Yeah. Oh. So like I'm in like a Planned Parenthood, and <laughs> and when you look like me, they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Oh, why? Because like you know, white men who look like me are like the reason half of the women are in Planned Parenthood <laughs> just, right now. <laughs> just nutting blind. Just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was like oh like. They're like, oh, are you sexually active? I'm like, yeah, like three times. <laughs> <laughs> I've, ha- I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, uh, I don't know what, what's your definition of active. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah, you have a fungal infection. They're like, you know, you can get that from not showering, right? So they just think I'm this like dirty, stinky <laughs> guy. They're like, hang on, hang on. I, I got to figure out what's going on here. And they're like, Candace, get over here. This dude's not fucking, and he's got a fungal infection. What's yeah. going on with this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, I've had to like get a test pretty much after every. <laughs> Girl, I've had sex with. Damn, just because like something would happen. Um, you got a sensitive dong, dude. Something like that. I'm like, like, is that is that what it is? It's just like, like know. shit keeps just. You touch like one of those plants. You touch it and it shrivels up and dies. Yeah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I was with a chick who had a a, a micro pussy. <laughs> what? Like how a guy can is have a micro pe- Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How, how am I 32 years old and I'm just hearing about micro pussies for the first Cause time? Because you've had a girlfriend for 10 years. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. true. That's true. Yeah, like like this chick, like when she would get her pap smears done, like the regular size speculum like wouldn't fit. That's like the device that they put in like mm-hmm. spread it. They would have to, and, and their two sizes are the regular size and then child size. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, now I feel gross. Yeah. Uh So like, I, like bring me, bring, bring me the Fisher Price yeah. spectacle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, with the easy bake oven. Yeah, yeah. Dude. yeah. Ah, she's got an easy bake oven. Let's yeah. get her. Yeah, 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 <laughs> there, yeah, there it is, dude. Yeah, yeah. So she had to use one of those, and so then <laughs> there was just all this friction. I just like had like like friction burns. And so, like, I'm at the play parrot, and they're like, yeah, it just looks dry. <laughs> and I'm like, well, is there penis moisturizer? <laughs> is there a special? Yeah. <laughs> they know you by name down at the clinic. They're yeah. like, Andy's back. They're yeah. calling you nicknames now. Yeah. They're like, Andy's back. This time his dick has rug burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, dude. Um, they're like, I'll oh, just use whatever you use on your face on your penis, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you take those like alcohol wipes that we had when we were in middle school. Remember those? Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have those acne alcohol wipes? Yeah, that, yeah. Like burn the shit out of your zits. And yeah. Didn't, they made your acne worse. Yeah. You're just rubbing alcohol pads on your dick. No, no, no. no. They 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 suggested lube, and then uh, I'm like, that's also a good idea. Um, but the lady I was seeing at the time didn't want to like mess up her internal pH. Um, so she didn't want to use it and I'm like, okay, well, if this girl doesn't want to use it and having sex with her hurts my penis, I'm going to have to break up with this girl cause her pussy's too tight. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I was like for like the third girl I've ever been with, like I've had sex like less than 50 times. I'm like, this is a weird, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to have to, why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to like go up to this girl who is like, <laughs> like awesome enough to like, let me be with her. And I'm going to have to be like, look, like. That's a that's another joke you can't tell in a V neck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> that 
that's another joke. They're like, shut the fuck up, pretty boy. Oh, yeah. The girl's pussy was too small. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You got to wear a fat suit to tell that joke. Yeah. Like, like, and, and, <laughs> and, like, she would do Kegels. Like, and, oh, my God. Yeah. I was like, you need to do the opposite of yeah, that. You, you need, need to, to, like, eat Twinkies and lay on the couch or something. Yeah. Damn. How do you fix a pussy that's too tight? Uh, the, the lube worked. Okay. Yeah, tremendous. So she did. She did. Uh, she she eventually tried it one time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, hey, like it's water based. It's either me or the lube. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta pick. yeah. 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 If you won't use the lube, then you can't have me. Yeah. You can't be together. Yeah. Your pussy is too tight. Yeah. It's far too tight. Yeah. That's that sucks because that's like problem. That's like that's like a dude's dick being too big. Yeah. That's like your dick is too big. Yeah. Like you have the best version of the thing. Yeah. You have the thing everyone wants. Yeah. And it's causing you problems. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is like one of those things. It's like, <laughs> like, like, like with, with the Kegels, it's like, I, I wish I didn't know that that was out there. I'd be so much happier. What? If I didn't know that, like, that micro pussies and, and Kegels existed. <laughs> Why would you be happier? Well, because now, like, I'm, I'm like, with, like, another girl or whatever, and they're like, oh, well, well, what do you like? And it's, like, like with the Kegels, it's, like, I don't know, can you, like, suck my dick with your pussy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, like, I just. How much can you bench with your pussy? Like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, do you ever, like, uh, it's like, do you ever, you know, like, hang a kettlebell from it and just, you know, like, do squats? The, the girls who do that, like, like, we look at that as weird. That is, like, the grade A muscular pussy that, that you want. Like, those are some muscles, dude. Yeah. It's, yeah. That, that's that's competitive pussy. It's, it's kind of nice to know that there's another diss out there for girls. That we didn't know existed till now. Micro like, pussy. Yeah, you're like you probably have a micro pussy. Well, that's like, not a diss. That, it's that's... not. Yeah, okay, so it's not. But like, dudes can't even fuck you happily, so it's kind of a diss, right? It hurts. You hurt dudes. I mean, with you. lube, you just have to use lube. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Dang it. Well, not she well she she didn't like foreplay, so it was like the worst of both worlds. She's like trying to get herself <laughs> wet with her small pussy <laughs> that it's not fully wet yet, and it's it's just chafing the oh, shit okay. out of me. Yeah. So now, now can you talk to girls pretty easy now, or is it still? Uh, I'm weird. I'm still like, because <clears throat> like I said, I've been in a relationship for ten years. So it's like for me, it they're they're either super hot and they scare me, or or the or I like if they're a certain range of hotness, I just like treat them like dudes. I'm yeah. Like, What's up, dude? I'm yeah. Like, nice to meet you. And they actually like like we can. It's cool to have like platonic vibes with chicks yeah. because I'm not like you know I feel like I've met. I've met a lot of cool girls and became friends with people because I'm not, yeah, or became friends with girls because I'm not like trying to fuck them. And like yeah. when I was younger, you know, it was like, oh, go talk to this girl. I want to talk to this girl because yeah. maybe we can, I can, you know, maybe we could, maybe I can make her my girlfriend. I was always more girlfriend minded than yeah. like fucking minded. Yeah, clearly, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just I don't know. Maybe I'm broken. Yeah, but I think also too, I was like, girls aren't into the shit I'm into, so they're boring to me. Right when I was like growing up as like a nerd, well, you know what I, I mean, I, I grew up as like a, a fucking video game. I was like, yeah. I'd rather play Final Fantasy. Yeah, you know what I mean, than, yeah, than, yeah, yeah. Than uh, than you know, talk about whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I end up just like doing projecting. It's like, oh, well, I'm into this weird stuff, and they're not gonna like me because I'm weird. Like what? Like metal music? Or? Yeah, yeah, metal, video games, yeah. comedy. It's like I'm also poor and like can't take you anywhere. Yeah, and like you know, when you're 29, that's like more important. Yeah, you know, some of them get taken on vacations and shit. And I feel like I give off weird girl energy to girls. Like I give off weird, uninterested girl energy, and they don't like it. Cause yeah. like I'll be at the metal shows and we'll rip a show, and they'll come up and try to talk to me. Yeah, and I'm like, hey, dude, like, you know. And then they'll yeah. be like, hi, and I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm not looking for that. And they're like, oh. and they're like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Or whatever. if they get mad because I I give them like. I give them the energy that girls give to weird dudes that are like, hey, yeah. hey, what's up? Can I touch your butt? You know yeah. what I mean? And they're, and they're like, ew, no. You know, and I kind of give them like a little bit of an ew, no. Yeah. And they just, do, it just, <laughs> they don't know how to fucking handle it. Yeah, especially like after shows, they try to like keep it platonic because it's like, I don't know. The, the the last thing you need is like a, a scandal, and oh, all it takes dude. is like so. All it takes is like one weird chick. All it takes is a girl to just be mad at, at that you even that you didn't talk. I'm almost more worried about that. Yeah, some girl mad because I didn't talk to her, make some shit up. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. But I just don't. Yeah, I don't. I just 
stay in the van or yeah. like you said there's so much shit going around so yeah. many dudes and and there's there's a lot of them where the dudes are like obviously scummy and yeah. then like four different girls come out and they're like yo this guy fucking yeah. grab my tits too or yeah, whatever yeah. you know yeah. what i mean and like fuck those guys but then there's some like there was the weird one that happened in spokane over by where i'm from yeah um with decapitated do you remember that no 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 dude pull that up because that shit's crazy this girl said the band decapitated is from poland yeah and they are like touring goats of yeah. death metal like yeah. nobody's toured more than they have like they, yeah they've been doing this for a long time if they were creepy fucked up dudes it would probably yeah you know hard to keep a a, a rape operation under yeah. wraps that long you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah and she said <clears throat> she said that they all took turns gang raping her in the bathroom on the bus and i don't really remember exactly like and then eventually once dude they got arrested held in a foreign country in america foreign to them they were held on these charges for does it say how long rape and kidnapping charges against all four members have been dropped friday that was, this is the drop the band members have been detained in the united states since a woman claimed does it say how long I'm still getting good at this whole reading part. Yeah. Um, according to court, court documents, a woman told police she was invited onto the tour bus. The woman claimed she was raped in the bathroom of the bus. Band members were arrested in California after the show September 9th and extradited to Spokane. I mean, if the whole band's going at it and they have a whole bus, why would they limit themselves to just the bathroom? <laughs> True, true. This is the true. kind of weird nitpicking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty true. It's pretty true. Yeah. And I mean, you know, obviously, it's it's like if I make a shit, great lawyer, if, you're like, Your Honor. Some, yeah, yeah. Your Honor, listen, they have They're the whole bus. Metal, have you yeah. ever been on one of these buses, Your Honor? We have one right here. If you yeah. turn to uh, subject 19, yeah. uh, uh, point one in the uh, evidence here, we have the entire bus. Pretty nice bus, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're, they're like trying here. to do a gangbang in the airplane bathroom. You <laughs> yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Like, it's, yeah, you can't even shit in there, let yeah. alone you know L L get a good a good pelvic thrust. Four going. death metal guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And what are they just tagging out and like flipping the little like thing to red? Yeah, yeah, you know occupied. What I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, it ended up that the girl. I don't. I'm not sure exactly what happened. If she, uh, the woman who remained on the bus told police that she was uh, raped by each member of the band. Later at the hospital, police noted significant bruisings on her arm were consistent with being restrained. Um, I want to know more. I want to know how long they were in in prison for because it's pretty crazy. Um, look up like before they were dis dismissed. See if you can find like when they were rate when they were uh, convicted or arrested for it. Decapitated, arrested. Just say that. <clears throat> It also doesn't help that they're like, you know, they're foreign. They're foreign dudes. They look like Vikings. The yeah. singer has dreads that like fall, like come on the like, walk around yeah. on the ground. They're like, they're burly, you know, gross looking dudes, mm -hmm. and they don't speak English and they don't know like the mannerisms too. So yeah. they're not like, they're probably like don't come off very nice. You know yeah. what I mean? It just doesn't help their case at all. Yeah. Uh, maybe they took out all the stuff down after it got dropped or something but yeah i don't know if i it, mean it's it, not what we're talking it, about anymore but saying, but it, it's it, saying that they got like arrested in september and then the charges were dropped in january yeah so they were in there for a while three four months yeah, yeah. they were in there for a, a while um but yeah it's it's wild i think later that the, the, a couple people came out and was like no like that girl's from here and she's crazy i don't know exactly what happened yeah. I, don't, I don't know how the can you can you can we look back one more time just for the fact check and see how they got like how they got uh dropped or something maybe that billboard thing says it. i don't know yeah and it sucks like especially like like when you're from a foreign country because like the united states might just be like yeah you're not allowed back in here and then they can't tour and, and they're not going to spend the time money and resources to yeah like really figure something out they would just rather extradite you back home and yeah what's to say earlier today decapitator released the following statement down at the bottom tony scroll uh, down a little bit as many of you may not be aware, back in 2017, the midst of our USA tour, we had the worst experience of our lives during the time we got arrested in jail, being falsely accused of sexual assault. It went through hell and back after the charges got dropped. When the evidence that would prove our innocence came to light, we were able to return to Poland. Uh, we made a short statement about the situation and had decided not to go into any sort of detail. 
the band had not been found guilty. We didn't want to share much. Uh, if any of the details we had to go through, we have no, we have known the truth, and the truth will always win. Okay, but are you sharing them now? Here, go down. It, it's set up here. Uh, at the time, the prosecutors filed a motion to dismiss the charges, citing the well-being of the victim as the reason. Okay. So, well, I guess just like the mental state of that lady. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it has been brought to our attention a small group of people who know nothing about the case <clears throat> have been reaching out directly in some of our beloved UK venues and promoters uh, that we announced after we announced our tour, bringing up the old articles of when we got arrested and attempted to cause damage. God, these fucking metal kids, man. I fucking hate these metal kids. I swear to God. Well, yeah, and it also doesn't make sense to like the regular person of like why somebody would lie about something like this. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, they're a mentally unstable person. And like what motivates them is different than what motivates you. Cause I feel like we like put ourselves in the situation. Yeah. Which is why like, like we find serial killers fascinating. It's like, oh, well, what would drive somebody to do this? Right. You know? Yeah. So like, like we we don't understand why well and it sucks when it it sucks when it happens like this because there are a bunch of pieces of shit in the entertainment industry like 100 like yeah. for, you know harvey weinstein's the tip of the iceberg if you think about it yeah. he's just the one that got caught or whatever yeah. you know and and it's like uh in this kind of shit you know fucks it up for women that are you know they, they don't want to be lumped in with the crazy yeah you know you either either people don't speak up because they don't want to be lumped in with the crazy people yeah. that lied or yeah. they're speaking up because they're telling the truth and yeah. then the people that have lied in the past like discredit their shit so yeah it's just it's like fucking yeah don't it, don't don't lie about shit yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> well it sucks because it seems like the, the the false instances get prosecuted more uh harshly than like the real instances in like, a lot of cases yeah because we brought up like brock turner earlier right like, caught red-handed Dude, three months that was crazy. So I just read a book that was like talking about that whole thing. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, he and basically the whole thing, you know, he did like what, six months and got out early yeah. or some shit. Yeah. And and uh, and it was like they were both super drunk and nobody really remembers what happened. You know, he yeah. says that they were kissing at the party and then they fell on their way to yeah. wherever back to his dorm. And yeah. then and then she. uh Oh, look at this fucking asshole. You yeah. do kind of look like Rock Turner, dude. I'm I look kidding. nothing like <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I look I'm nothing kidding. like I know, dude. We were just saying you look like every white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got that Brock Turner on you. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. No, uh, no, but uh, yeah, he just obviously, like, what girl is going to let you have sex with her next to a dump? She was, like, next to a dumpster. Yeah. They were, like, it was, like, dude. <laughs> You're gonna have. I don't think any any self-respecting woman's gonna have consensual drunk sex next to a a dumpster that smells like water trash. You yeah. Know? No. Yeah. Guys are scummy out there. Um, yeah. So he gets caught red-handed and then basically gets off. Right. Because he's months. fucking rich. Doesn't look like the type. Yeah. Right. And like you're like we were just talking about like the like this one probably re like for sure real yeah and then the decapitated one those guys look like monsters yeah and so that and that's a and complete she's covered in mosh pit and that's bruises. a completely far-fetched you know yeah. i think there was something and i don't don't quote me on this i because we didn't couldn't find it in the article but i think there was a thing where she was like hanging out around the tour bus being annoying yeah and like they were like go away yeah you know what i mean yeah and and then that that happened you know this happened and then and then with this kind of shit, it's like this guy fucking obviously is up to no good. Yeah, you know. And then and then his shit's just like, oh, he's on the swim team. Yeah, <laughs> just give him. Yeah, get, just hey, don't go raping. And, yeah, you know. And I, I was taking like, back law to class. classes. So I was taking law classes for a little bit, and you know, it's something that they they teach you is like rape is one of like the hardest crimes to prove because even if you found like semen in a woman's vagina, that just proves sex happened. Right. That doesn't prove it wasn't consensual. So. It's a super difficult thing to prove. So when they do find it red-handed like Brock Turner and he just gets – pretty much gets away with it just by spending three months in jail. Yeah. Um, it's it's super frustrating because it's, it's, a, so it's a difficult thing to actually uh, catch somebody with. And then there was like a an old university story where like, yeah, a girl not only like lied about like being sexually assaulted but the people she said did it didn't even exist. And they just like went after the fraternity that she said that those guys were in, and then they like looked it up. Like, yeah, no, those those names aren't those aren't students here. That's crazy. Yeah. So then there was this like huge like backlash on the other end. Yeah. Um, Dude, did you hear about that fucking doctor? So this book I was reading was about like how people get deceived. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know if you've heard of Malcolm Gladwell. 
He's our, our author. I've heard the name, but I don't know anything <clears throat> he about read, it. He read the tip, wrote The Tipping Point and a couple other books, but this one's called Talking to Strangers, and it's just about, like, how th- people get deceived in our, you know, like, and how we, it's not very often that, like, we get lied to. Yeah. So we're not, like, like it's not very often that people, like, people for the most part, they've done studies on it, and again, I'm probably misquoting this, yeah. but, but people, like, we, we haven't evolved to be lie detectors because it doesn't serve us very well like if we were if we evolved to be like if we were all fbi agents like i don't trust you andrew like how do i know that you're not going to come in here and then it wouldn't we would never do the podcast it would never like society wouldn't work if we were all always trying to figure out whether someone's lying to us or not okay so so from like an evolutionary standpoint right we we don't have like safeguards is what you're saying yeah yeah that's what the book was saying Yeah, yeah is that we don't have we don't we we haven't evolved as people to be to be harder to deceive or be better lie detectors because it doesn't really benefit us in any way because the net benefit of trusting people yeah is more or less you know outweighs you know hey yeah. you're lying to me like yeah. and so the and for the most part people are people are good you yeah. know what i mean and and they're not trying to deceive you but then there's these people that get through so the book was looking at these people that get through and a lot of it is like based on like uh the con- the the general like consensus of you know like how decorated these people are in the community and yeah. all these different th- reasons that people it's called defaulting to truth so yeah. being like you know oh he's probably telling the truth like yeah. why do we do that that's what the book yeah. was going into so one of these guys and i don't know the doctor you'll have to look up gymnastics doctor larry nassar yeah the guy that like fingered like a hundred yeah. hundreds yeah i don't i we got to find out how many because it's so fucked up and i can't believe i didn't know more about this before Apparently yeah, yeah it's a widely known thing yeah yeah but yeah, this fucking guy, dude. Look at him. He looks like the fucking serial killer from Reno 911. Yeah, yeah. You remember yeah. that guy? I'm just glad he didn't say me this time. No, you don't look like <laughs> I'm sorry I said you look like Rock. <laughs> we were talking about it earlier, dude. I'm sorry. It's a callback, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm yeah. trying. I'm yeah. trying, dude. It didn't land. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> He looks exactly like the guy from fucking from Reno nine one one. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. Oh, yeah. You're too young, dude. No, How I, old I, I just haven't seen a lot of things. I'm 29. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Now in a separate tab, pull up serial killer from Reno nine one one. But Larry Nassar, dude. I just want to show you this comparison because he looks exactly like this guy. Serial killer Reno nine one one. Just images, yeah. <laughs> he looks exactly no like that shit. guy. Dude. Yeah. Oh look, there's a big there next to it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you called it. Dude, look at him. Why does he look the exact same? Craig Pullen. That's so funny. All right, go back to Larry. Dude, Larry's a son of a bitch. What a piece of shit. Yeah. How many people? So this guy, for people that don't know, he was like the main doctor, right, of the gymnastics yeah. team. Yeah. You might know this case better than I do. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I just know that he was like the physical therapy doctor. And so he would basically just like finger these girls and pretend like he was giving them an exam yeah. in front of their parents. Yeah. And like, Damn. yeah, in the oftentimes the parents were in there. And then, like, it, it, he was so decorated as this, like, fucking yeah. physician guy yeah. that would give these girls physicals that, like, when this stuff started coming out, like, and girls would go home and be like, Mom, I feel like he was touching me weird and he's weird and, like, it didn't feel like he needed to do that or whatever. Yeah. And he was just digging around in there. And the parents were like, no, honey. It's, Trust yeah, the science. He, right. It's yeah. the default to truth thing. Yeah. Trust the science, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, God yeah. damn it. Yeah, if but, only he had that line back then, <laughs> dude. This guy's so fucked up. I want to yeah. know how many victims. Type in Larry Nassar victim count or something. Um, victim and Kyle. and like, dude, there was even like apparently there was one girl who like almost all the way to the end, two hundred sixty-five women. What a piece of shit! Wow, dude. What a creepy. Little <laughs> Jesus Christ! What a nasty fuck! I hope he gets fucked real good in prison wherever he's at right now. It says he just got stabbed this year. Nice, dude. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. Fuck you, Larry. Street dude. justice. Street bro. justice, baby. Yeah. Fuck stabbed you, multiple Larry. Multiple times in Florida prison. Two hundred sixty-five. Disgraced. Here, shut that video off. 
I'll fucking try to play an ad. Oh no, it's good. It's muted. It's fine. Yeah. Um, damn, disgraced sports doctor Larry Nassar was convicted of sexually abusing Olymp- college Olympic college female gymnast was stabbed multiple times by another inmate in Florida. Nice dude. What was that guy's name? Is he dead? Because I don't want him to be. I want him to live through it and get stabbed again. Yeah, he's serving. I think he's alive still. Yeah. Good. Yeah, if he was dead, it would have said so. Good. That's said, true. Said he got stabbed for a comment that he made while watching women's Wimbledon, like the the tennis. He's still in there fucking Being a creep. rubbing his dick through his pants watching fucking female sports. These are the kind of men that watch female sports, by the way, right? <laughs> <laughs> These are the kind of men that watch female sports, by the way, dude. Fucking, di- fucking disgraced pedophile fucking i guess yeah. he wasn't a ped they were college i guess some of them were probably underage but yeah disgraced sexually ass- uh sexual assault fucking nasty dudes in prison are the guys watching fucking yeah. women's tennis <laughs> jeez that shit's crazy that's so anyway funny. that's enough about rape on the podcast dude yeah how do you write jokes <laughs> <laughs> like this yeah, like, exactly like this dude <laughs> holy shit um fuck man so you're uh, you're working at Black Rabbit now. Yeah, yeah. So do you work there? Work there? Like you're uh, on the sort booth. of. They're giving you. They're giving you fucking. Yeah, yeah. They they're paying you in Starburst. Like, they give me some cash. <laughs> some and cash. I right? get some stage time and I get to produce a show there. Let's talk about that place. That place needs more more clout. I love that place. It's a great room. So much. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. might be my favorite. Like, I mean, the mothership's awesome. Yeah, but. God damn. Well, yeah, I mean, just in terms of accessible places. Accessible and, like, no, it feels naughty. Yeah. I love that it feels like a no-no place. Like, it feels like we're not, you're not supposed to congregate in there. Yeah, yeah. And there's no bar, and you bring your own, you bring your own yeah. beer. Yeah, you can bring you, your own beer. It's in downtown Austin. There's a whole wall. Uh, it's made of brick, but there's uh, kiss marks on the whole wall. Yeah. Um, the rumors are that it used to be a place where they had shave parties where they would all like shave and like have orgies and stuff like that down there. Shave parties? Yeah. I'm not familiar with shave parties. Neither dude. am I. But So you used to shave your genitals and fuck? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So like <laughs> when we first got there, yeah, there's all the kiss marks on the wall, but there were also just like belts on the other side of the wall. Belts? Belts. Like waist, like for your pants? Yeah. Like, like, like those kind of just belts. hanging on the wall. Yeah, just like like where you is would, it like, like a mark of how arms. many people fucked the, in there? Is that what it is? I think that's what the kiss lips it's are. Like a calling card. Yeah, it's like oh, well, you know, you get to get to kiss mm. the wall. What a disgusting fucking place that was, dude. Yeah, <laughs> gross. Yeah. Imagine the a guy. lot of them have been washed off. But imagine having to be the guy that comes in and like sweeps the floor after. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randy, you missed a load over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, those are the rumors. I have no idea if yeah. it's true, but there are a lot of it's fun. kiss marks. Uh, yeah, that the was wall. the first time I like tried to do. I went up at a show there. Um, I like. I thought it was a, a mic. Um, Sean Nix told me to come. You know. Yeah. He told me to come down there, and he was like, "Hey, there's a." He didn't know, and he was like, "There's a mic going. You want me to sign you up?" I was like, "Sure." And so he, I got there and Joey was like, dude, I, I, it's not, it's a show, but I'll like put you on. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. And so, and it was cool because like, I'm still getting, I'm still in the transition of like, okay, I've been doing open mics for a year. Yeah. And the shows that I've been on, the little shows that I've been on have felt way better than those open mics. And like, I think I want to try to do more little spots. Yeah. Um, and just kind of Alden was telling me that it's like a transitional period before you start doing you know more sh- more shows better than shows. Open mics. Yeah, yeah you do like the the le- the smaller shows you do have to learn to do the open mics <clears throat> oh and yeah. and how to just uh talk into the void yeah and get Absolutely. nothing because yeah. you, you will have to do that on stages unfortunately in clubs yes. yeah yeah for sure yeah. and i've had an i think i've i've had an, a little experience with that already so yeah. i'm still just like such a new a newbie you know yeah. i haven't even posted any clips or people don't really it's not fully announced that i'm doing it but i love it and uh, i love the the grind and eating the shit i mean i guess the cool thing nowadays about like posting clips is that if it's bad nobody sees it like the algorithm goes like yeah this is trash <laughs> the algorithm's just other comics at an open mic yeah <laughs> you suck yeah dude. it's just like like th- this is bad it won't see the light of day. It's not like, yeah. it's not like you know, if you're like a famous person and you drop a special and it sucks and then everybody sees it. Right. You know. That's true. So like nowadays it's like, 
But but the, the main focus should be like getting the material up to snuff rather than are you posting a bunch? Absolutely. Because there's also the people, um, depending on how much you care about the art form, they get really far because they're good at the business aspect of it. Yeah. But they're bad at the art aspect of it. Mm-hmm. So they network really well. They get on all these great shows, but they're not that good. Right. Yeah. I don't want to be one of those guys. Yeah. Because I feel like I could. Yeah. Because that's that's my wheelhouse. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm trying but, to learn the business side. But, like, either way, it helps because it's not like the extra stage time is making them worse. Right. So you could be bad on Beyond Shows or you could be bad and not be on shows and not be making money. I think for, for me, the, like, I don't know. I want, like, two things out of comedy, which is, like, the hang. Yeah. And then, like, I want to get good enough to, like, kill and get respect from other comics yeah yeah and i think that those are the two things i want like yeah. i don't i'm not starry-eyed about being the biggest comic ever I think yeah a lot of people move here and they're like i'm gonna be big i'm gonna yeah. be stop no i'm funnier than stavros so i can be big if he yeah. can get a netflix special i can and people yeah, yeah. start looking at it like that and it's like i just want to be i just want to like hang with the comics and yeah. like like you said i kind of like fell in love with with you guys like yeah. with the with like uh, and, uh, well no i just just with the hang of like being around comics because they're not afraid to say even if something doesn't land it's like ah you tried you yeah. know what i mean or whatever and it's not like oh i'm gonna judge you now that you said this you know thing that didn't land because you were trying to everybody's trying to be funny and yeah you yeah. know what i mean and i'm sure as i'm in it longer that'll have its you know moments where it's like yeah. that wasn't funny and it you know I, made me feel bad or whatever but i even when that's happened i feel like i've i've heard of or seen people just like hey dude that made me feel like people are they're pretty oh you know i don't know i mean i don't know you can tell me more you're more experienced than i am well uh i guess it depends like yeah if you say something and it sucks it, it depends on how long you keep up with that bit like if it's yeah. like a year and a half and it's like god damn this dude's still doing yeah. that trash ass yeah. bit. yeah he's still doing the racist trans joke yeah <laughs> like, yeah and there's also stop. some people so i kind of look at comedy at least how i do it like uh like hot sauce right i like it when it's hot but it's gotta have flavor mm, some people their goal that's good. some people their goal is like i just wanted to be as hot as possible mm-hmm. and so then they're just saying all these like terrible horrible things and they're not funny that's what i care about yeah is it funny or not i don't care if what you said was terrible you do kind of do that you're like hot but with flavor yeah yeah you yeah. give him it's the got racy, some bite it's the racy stuff yeah yeah but 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 then you're like oh but he's a sweet boy yeah and he delivered it well yeah <laughs> and it's funny and like you know eventually you get the stage presence to where like the audience knows like yeah this person wouldn't actually do these things like thank goodness that i look younger and i'm not like terrifying (laughs) looking yeah you know trying to get off with an israel palestine joke right you know yeah yeah (laughs) and and i don't know why like my mind defaults for some reason like my mind thinks i in every situation my mind is like this is the worst possible thing you could say and it used to bother me because like then i just thought i was a bad person Mm -hmm. i was like why is my gut reaction just terrible just horrible things you could say yeah uh I mean, uh, you're thinking like a comic. I think that's. I'm well, yeah. getting more like that. Like I can see my. It's like I feel like a. Like you know how they like pigs when they leave yeah. the pen they start growing tusks and yeah, hair yeah. and shit. Uh, like I yeah. feel like that's what's happening to me. Like I'll something bad will happen and I'll go, oh no, and then I'll and then my brain will be like, you know, well Austin's the also, funny thing. Like it'll it'll tell and, and I'm like fuck. Like I'm thinking like I'm I'm hanging out with Ridley too much or whatever. I'm thinking about I'm well, thinking about funny shit. Well, the yeah. funny version of everything. Yeah, Austin's a very – well, there's, there's like, two comedy scenes. There's, like, the old Austin scene that hasn't, like, fully melded yet with the everybody who's moved in. Mm. Um, they're kind of upset that they, like, took everything over and they haven't, like, uh, yeah. yeah, assimilated with it. And it's, like, well, sorry that billions of dollars moved into your city and now you can do this full time. But Right. Shit happens. Now but, there's but, more but stage they think, like, they think, like, like, Tony Hinchcliffe's, like, a racist – Mm-hmm. You know, so like they they don't want to do any of that, but because like edgier comedy is like what's like promoted, so everybody's kind of like, you know, th- there's there's more motivations that people can see around here to be edgy. In San Diego, it was clean comedy because the only people that were like making enough money to do a living were doing clean comedy. So there, I was like writing cleaner. That's so, where you're from. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. There's, like, different styles in different cities, and Austin's definitely got, like, a dirtier, edgier sense of humor. Well, they're just down. It's, like, instead of, like, is this guy going to offend me, it's, like, I'm excited to see what jokes this guy has to offer. Yeah. Right? And so it's, like, the whole preface to the experience for them, they're, like, 
they're down to hear some jokes. Yeah. And they know that the jokes might get wild. Yeah. Here. And they're they're generally pretty cool with it. But they're also down with cleaner stuff. Uh-huh. But because we see everybody on stage, you know, I, I don't know if I should say the words on this pod. I don't What well, I mean faggot you know, yeah no no that's, that's fine yeah, yeah so like they <laughs> we love that word <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so like like p- people say that like it's uh you know and then like comics come here and they're like oh my god you can say faggot on stage here. yeah yeah i've heard <laughs> yeah. a lot of people talk about that tim warner was saying the same thing yeah you know, just kind of like oh you can say get away with saying retard on stage yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so now there's like this you know and then now you get dudes that just like to say retard and faggot, and then yeah. and then those dudes come here and just say that a bunch on stage, and they don't get it's any like laughs. the hot sauce thing. Yeah, they're it's like, like the hot like, sauce. They're it's like, just, oh, I just want to be as offensive as possible, right? And know? there's no actual meat to the joke. Yeah, so it's just so it does come off like, oh, this guy just hates gay people. Yeah, Ew. my my favorite thing is when somebody goes, oh, I don't like jokes about like suicide, or I don't like jokes about this or that, and I'm like. Okay, well, here's a suicide joke, and here's a rape joke, and here's that. And well, you're like, like, yeah, and they're like, okay, well, I like those jokes, but generally, and I'm like, okay, well, you just don't like bad jokes. Yeah, you like jokes. Wow, that's yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, you only like it if it's funny. Yeah, and that's kind of goes with anything. Yeah, dude, you'd have to be so. I'm sorry, just to go back to what you just said about Tony, you'd have yeah. to be so brain dead and not paying any attention to think that that dude is racist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is funny because he loves racial humor, but yeah. it's like we all grew up listening to Chappelle show and yeah. quoting that shit and yeah. fucking we all fucking said some shit when Chappelle show was you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's why any like uh white knight kind of dude, yeah, like in there the metal scene is full of these fucking dudes. Yeah. It drives me nuts. They're like pretending to be all social justice just to get like tattooed goth girl pussy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, dude, y- you I'm like, how old are you? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, you were 12 when the Chappelle show was out. You were you were fucking dropping bot. You were saying yeah. horrible shit with your friends. Yeah, because yeah. everybody was. That shit was awesome. It yeah, was the yeah. most. It was the funniest, most popular thing. Yeah. And like everyone, you know, my parents were quoting Dave Chappelle. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like everyone was fucking having fun back in the day. So yeah. don't try to act like you know, like you're like you're holier than thou. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. And yeah. that's what a lot of people do. Like they try to act like they've never fucking you know made a, ra- a racial joke or laughed at one yeah and yeah. it's like shut the fuck up dude like well, you said you like good jokes yeah you like it when the, when it's funny and it you know a lot of people don't do it funny they yeah. try to do it oh, and it's yeah. not funny and yeah. it's like jesus christ yeah and uh like, like, like another thing like you know there's, there's there's like such like terrible anxiety out there um a lot of people are like retreating online because it's more comfortable for them than talking with people and that's because there's like a, a lot of people out there who are like, oh, well, here's the things you can't say and here's the things you can't say. Like, like, like maybe, maybe that's like the right way to talk to people, but you're also just making it more difficult to talk to people. Right. For and, people that already maybe have problems talking to people. Yeah. And, and like maybe, you know, I, I just didn't know that that wasn't cool. But now you're going to like vilify me. So now I'm just not going to say anything or I'm just going to like re- retreat online. Well, the more rules you put in, like you said, you had to fucking watch YouTube videos on how to talk to people. It's yeah. already difficult enough. So yeah. even you're speaking from experience even. Yeah. And it's like, OK, so you're going to add more rules in now. OK, well, then I'll just go on on Twitch and I just will talk in the chat. Like, yeah. Then I'll just you know what I mean? Yeah. Then I'll just be a homebody. Yeah. So there's like all these escapes. So like, um. Like back in the day, life was so difficult. The idea of like going to the gym somewhere where you would physically exhaust yourself would be like, be like, dude, you have to like farm the land. You have to get the water. You have to, you have to. Like, like life was so physically difficult. The idea of setting time specifically aside to exercise to, to exercise is insane. And or and, like hunting to get your food. Yeah. Same shit. And and like now, like all this online stuff, like yeah, it's convenient for us. But like the the next generation growing up that like always had it. It's like if you don't have to talk to people. You, like you like like you you don't have to nowadays. You could have all your groceries delivered. True. You could order everything on the apps, and then you just take away even like the most like like little interactions with people that you have. So now it's like more difficult. And then you add all these rules, like oh you can and can't say these jokes. Right. And you have to find out the pronouns, and there's 56 of them. Yeah. Right. And you're like wait. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I'm just gonna order groceries online and fucking never leave my house. Yeah. Because it's like oh well I don't want to be seen as this. I don't want to like lose my job. So th- there's like all these things. Uh, all these like rules and so I, i'd rather live in an environment it's like yeah what that person said isn't cool but like i'm not gonna vilify them because yeah. then i know like when i'm talking like i'm gonna be forgiven you know if i slip up yeah you know and then like after you slip up enough times then you learn how to not to slip up 
Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. That's just like a more. I, I'm, I'm a psych major. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, chill, Frankie. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well, chill, Josh. I, I'm like, well, how, how do people... <laughs> that, that was my thing. I was like, dude, I don't understand people at all. Like, how, how do yeah. people think? How do people go from like point A to point B? Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely err on the side of like, I would rather there be like like less rules. And like, obviously, it's like, if you don't like it, you don't have to talk to them. But I'm not going to, yeah. you know, go online and be like, oh, well, this person's a piece of shit. I've always thought like, just... Like, let, like, even online and stuff, when they, yeah. like, censor, like, you know, hate speech and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, like, just let the racist moron people fucking talk. Yeah. And then ev- the court of public opinion will deal with it. They'll yeah. be like, oh, I don't fucking follow Andrew Tarr because he's a f- horrible racist. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If you're just tweeting a bunch of horrible shit or whatever. And yeah. it's, like, like let them tweet the horror. Like, just because it's bad and you don't want to see it yeah. doesn't necessarily. I mean, we should kind of know if that dude is a piece of shit you yeah, know yeah. like if you're psycho enough to just be like racist ranting on on yeah. on a social media app then i think everyone should know yeah i yeah, think yeah. everyone should be like oh dude steer clear of that guy yeah you know but no it's like it's set up with like bumpers yeah it's like a padded room yeah the internet you know what i mean but yeah uh, it, it sucks and like um just with like going on like the social media and like, like stuff that they like censor or not like if if you did a Joe Biden joke like a year ago, like that video would get taken down. I did a Joe right. Biden joke like on TikTok and it was it got like 14,000 likes and then they took it down for bullying and harassment and then I appealed Being it. Making fun of Joe Biden cuz he's old? Yeah. Well, no, oh, I'm I'll, I'll tell it after. Yeah, yeah. Um but uh so they they took it down for bullying and harassment and then they put it back up and then they took it down again for endangering minors. What? And all it was was, you know, like how uh, like dual how he pods. sniffs kids or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So like, like yeah, dual yeah. pods got banned. They said that like a lot of kids were smoking flavored tobacco, and I'm like, oh yeah, well it makes sense to me that Joe Biden would ban that for that reason. He doesn't like the way it makes kids smell. That's pretty fun. Yeah, it's so, good. So that was all I said, yeah. and then like that got like taken down. But like now that that's changed, now that you can like make like a bunch of Joe Biden jokes. Oh, people love it. Yeah, yeah. But like my my account now, like every video I've posted after that got like a fraction yeah. of the of the views and likes. Doesn't it kind of feel like we're in a sweet spot with the political thing where it's like for the most part, there's this we're in this magical moment right now where you can make fun of both sides pretty much equally. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Right? The, the, because the, like the tides are finally turning around. Because like Obama, you're racist, you're making fun of Obama. Yeah. Back in 08. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're a piece of shit. Yeah. You know, what What are you fucking, you know, what are you a Republican? What yeah. Are you, yeah. What do you like John McCain? What are you yeah. racist? You yeah. know what I mean? What do you don't want a black president? What's your problem? Yeah. But but Obama, I mean, he's funny. Yeah. He talked really funny. Mark, you know, yeah, like yeah. when he would when he would do his speech, very easy to imitate, make yeah. fun of. Yeah, the long uh, pauses. The whole joke that he's gay, hilarious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But then, but then, but back then it was like you were a dirty Republican, you know? Yeah. Uh, back then, but like, now it's fun and trump is i mean the most fun to make fun of he's the best to make fun of yeah and everybody does it and and always has to the point where it was like okay guys like we need you know like it was it almost became like it wasn't punching down i don't know what it became but it was just it was low-hanging fruit is what it was i think at a certain point right some people like by the time the 2020 rolled around you're just like shut up with your fucking trump people made it their identity i know people that like went by you know people i'm the trump slayer Oh, you know people? Oh, you're from San Diego? Yeah. Oh, you're from California? <laughs> Spokane. I'm from fucking Portland, Oregon, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm from the fucking liberal butthole of this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the blue-haired anus of this country. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, dude, I fucking didn't want to hear people like they you want to talk about making it their identity i wish there was something else that i could call it like, yeah they yeah. were born into this yeah, like, yeah i was born for this yeah and it's like dude it's it, it's like just give it a rest why do yeah. you care it's like you've gained weight and you're you're losing hair like like take care of yourself why are you foot did you see what he tweeted today yeah did you see what he said today yeah yeah and you're like jesus christ no because i fucking don't pay attention to this i don't like anybody who like really thinks of themselves as a good person I don't think I do either. Cause like, 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 if you think that you've been like dieting great and like exercising, like you're gonna have a cheat day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, 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 if you're self conscious, you're like, am I a good? Like, am I actually a bad person? Like, if right. you think that you're kind of a bad person, you're gonna be like, be more, 
like well one day you're just gonna like get mad and scream the n-word right <laughs> like if like these, that's what you're saying like the, like these <laughs> yeah. these sjw like yeah. like okay hang on i'm trying to i'm trying to make sense of your your analogy well, here. Well, like if you're the, the, the other analogy is like you know to prevent forest fires you do control burns <laughs> you know you set like right. little fires to like burn all the brush well you don't do anything for a long time that's also why like school shooters are like oh like we never thought that they would do anything like mm -hmm. this i'm like yeah it's the first bet like they're pent up right you know, like, but that's just funny to think like a social justice warrior, you know, yeah. blue haired, uh, uh, non-binary person from Portland. Like, like they go around like making sure they're walking the straight and yeah. narrow, and then like they stub their toe and scream the n word. You know what I mean? You know, or like, well, like it comes when out it comes like, out, it comes out like horribly. it comes out like Chaz. Chaz, the 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 oh yeah the, the, the thing the in Seattle, yeah yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. God, I forgot about that. Yeah, everyone wants to forget about everything that happened. In yeah, and then uh, some rapper made himself the police, and he was just shooting people. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And these are the these Did are that, the that what people. Happened? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, he like shot a couple of people. He's like, look, if you break the laws, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know, just like like stuff like that. Yeah, there was like a whole, I, and I don't, I just didn't like to look. Honestly, like I was in, so, you were. We were in such the middle of all of that nonsense, like yeah. with the rioting and stuff, that yeah. it's like, I think as a defense mechanism, a lot of people just like, I don't want to, I don't want to think about it. I don't yeah. want to hear it. Turn off the news. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we don't want to. And then a lot of people denied it was happening. That's what was pissing me off. Yeah, like people don't live here, don't even know what's happening. And I live down the street from the middle of the riot thing. Yeah, yeah. in the middle of downtown. Yeah, I lived like up the road, yeah. right outside of downtown by yeah. BSU. Yeah, and it was like no, no, like it's right down the street from my fucking house, and yeah. it sucks. Yeah, and these people suck. These yeah. fucking green haired throwing fucking Molotov cocktails. And it's so funny. Dude, let's put them on black. Look up the mug shots from the Portland riots. Have you seen them before? No, no, Oh, no. dude, look up the mug shots from the Portland uh, protests. It is so funny, dude. Portland protester mug shots. There should be like a sp like one specific image where you could like see them all like that fucking busted yeah. magazine, you know? Yeah, yeah. They're just, they're just, the worst, the worst type of people. And and it sucks. And they all and think highly of themselves. They think highly of themselves. And it sucks because, like, the cause, like, the initial idea of, yeah. like, the reason for doing all this is is great. Yeah. Like, and I fucking support it. Fuck, yeah. you know, fuck bad police officers and yeah. people that are killed unjustly and, yeah. like, the inequity, the inequality and the fucking way that the police treat people. Yeah, yeah. That fucking sucks. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying, but... But these guys were down there to be, to be cool, bro. <laughs> Look at these motherfuckers, yeah. man. The reverse mohawk. <laughs> bro, holy shit. You just can't Some make this. Some of them look you, meffed out. You, they are. Some of them are, dude. And if they're not on meth, they're like, I'm on ketamine because I have anxiety. Yeah. And it's like, dude, click on that. Can you blow that fucking thing up? Is it going to take us to some stupid website? Reddit. Oh, nice. Perfect. Wow, dude. Oh, my God. The top. The top. Top right? Yeah. Not, not, oh. not. And, I mean, that was probably after he got his ass whooped. Talking about top top one yeah. over from. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Four, he yeah. was probably a tweaker before they. Excuse me. They were probably a tweaker before before they got fucked. They probably got batoned and hit with, like, yeah. you know, bean bags or whatever. They're shooting at people. But, dude, these fucking nutballs. Oh, that, that guy with the huge forehead shaving part of his eyebrow. That's not the problem. Which one? <laughs> the the one right below the magnifier. Oh yeah, dude. That, yeah. dude. that boy got a big head. That's a big old cranium. He yeah. might be from another planet. And that's coming from me with a big head. Is that yonder down there? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No, that guy likes IPAs and That's why yeah, so like I mean all, all these people think that they're like great people and then they, well, they, they got behind they, a they got behind oh, a cause, and that, I feel that, bad that. again. I I think the cause. I think I think a lot of people got kind of Houdini'd into acting that way because yeah. they riled them up. The news, the media, kind of riled it. So and and it's all coming from like I think the start, the initial, the seed is like a good place. It yeah. comes from a good place, but then you do wild shit, and it's like you have to be so brain dead to not figure out that these battles are won. In my opinion, I think they're won in courtrooms. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Buttoned up. 
you yeah. know americans can't be treated like the you know yeah. al sharpton type shit that's yeah. what fucking that's what seals the deal on you want cops to not do something you gotta fucking you gotta you know take them to court yeah and and this just makes this just doesn't help you yeah. know the whole fucking ride and dude they fucked that city up so bad yeah and the downtown area still hasn't recovered i don't think yeah and i i went back uh i went back you know and their response that well nobody you ever went downtown anyway okay that's not good yeah downtown and that's not true because what and what people the the reality that people didn't want to i don't think deal with in portland some of them probably still haven't and and i hate to just sh i'm not just shitting on portland here but it's yeah. just it's some true shit and it's my perspective my feelings my show bitch yeah, Fuck it. You yeah. hear it hear it turn it off you don't want to hear it yeah, yeah but they uh th they like they don't realize that like the little wonderland that we had for from you know my whole life until 2016 or whatever yeah, yeah the whole wonderland that we have it only existed with tourism yeah it was built and paid for and and maintained by tourism like because it was such a a, a, a unique place and a, yeah. and in and, and so beautiful and yeah. clean yeah and and so um you know white women from Missouri yeah. wanted to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go there just to spend money and walk around. Yeah. And what you see, you know, now is like, it's hard to fucking do business there. Yeah. It's hard to everything's, ex it's as expensive as it is here to live there. Yeah. And it fucking sucks. Yeah. It's boring. The weather sucks. There's yeah. fucking homeless garbage and shit and needles and people smoking crack everywhere. Yeah. yeah and yeah. blowing each other. Yeah. Right, and next to the schoolyard. Yeah. And, the, and there's no police in Anywhere. If you get mugged, the cops laugh at you. Yeah, they're like, "We're not coming. We're not. Coming. You know what I mean? Yeah, Is yeah. there somebody with a gun right now? Like we can't. And even if there was, they wouldn't come. Yeah. And it's like that. And then the tourism died after the riot stuff. Yeah. And they were like, "Fuck it, we don't care. You know, we're Portland. We riot. And it's like, no, no, that's yeah. not. That can't be. That can't be our personality. Because if the tourism fails, this whole thing fails. Yeah. And it then, doesn't work. And it's then, the foundation. We have then, to. We were number two on the places to live my whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like yeah. new food cities, new blah, blah. Nobody fuck new. No. Nobody's talking about that anymore because because we wanted to fucking throw Molotov cocktails at the at the Portland police building, which it's like we in the mayor's house. Yeah. The, oh, the, I mean, fuck the mayor. That was that was awesome. The, the, fuck, the, the mayor the sided mayor. with all the protesters. That shit was so and then crazy. they lit his house on fire. Ted Wheeler's such a cuck. Yeah. It's so funny. And then uh, in, in like something else, it's like, you know, like the road to hell's paved with good intentions. So like, yeah, yeah you know, with like the, the, the Black Lives Matter rights. And then they gave all this money to an organization called Black Lives Matter, which is like a hard thing to argue. Against Dude, just it's because the, of the name. It's, it's the it's the best. It's the best cause to get people behind yeah it's so easy to get behind that cause you're like fuck yeah they do and, you know and, what i mean and then the people behind the organization squandered all the money bought themselves <sighs> giant houses in los angeles and, and it's just you know i hate it, to say it, i told you, you so played. but i saw that fucking coming you could have looked the whole time it said that the money just goes to joe biden yeah it just goes to the D the dac or whatever it yeah. was that gives all their money to the democratic yeah. party and so it's like all the money that they raised for that went to the people that bought the mansions next to Justin Timberlake in yeah. L.A. Yeah. and and uh, you know whatever Sean King or whatever the yeah. white dude that yeah. whatever that, you know that, 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 that acts black yeah. yeah yeah is he white or black I don't know I mean everybody says he's white and he insists that he's black okay yeah cool he's very white passing if he's that's black. like that's like people in Portland no dude I've had friends in Portland that that like uh, like our black dudes in Portland that are like dude the like people have. I, like they were like they went down to the protest like the first day there was like this beautiful thing where like yeah. everyone laid in the street yeah and they were like we're done with this and oh there was if like, you block traffic there, item i'm against whatever it is well but this was like a this was an organized peaceful yeah. thing where, yeah. where people laid in the street and yeah. it was like it was incredible yeah like everybody was like wow we're really making a difference and then it was like two days later it was green-haired white kids throwing fire at, at buildings yeah so it was like whoa this is a party yeah. this yeah. is a party now my buddy told me that he went down there and he was like seeing girls that were come from like Beaverton, which is like Cedar Park. Yeah. Right? yeah. And the girls would come, a car full of white girls would, would drive down to the protest, get out right by the Apple store yeah. and go protest, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And then they would get in the car 
and and leave. Yeah. Just to show that they were, because it was a trendy, cool thing yeah, to do. Yeah, it became performative. It was like the black square. It um, was, dude. Yeah. yeah. But I never, it, I never then, posted and it. And so my buddy was like, yeah, I, I'm not, so I stopped going down there because it started to feel weird. Yeah. It started to feel like something different and weird. Yeah. And it was getting too, it started to be white people acting crazy. And that's yeah. why he was like, I don't, and having fun. And he's yeah. like, and that's not what this is yeah. supposed to be, right? Yeah. And, that uh, be and for then sports. he was saying, <laughs> yeah, 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 that yeah. should be for football, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But, uh, and then he was like, uh, he told one of his white female friends yeah. that he was like, "Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going down there anymore, like, cause it's weird, and I don't think that, you know, they're they're not doing stuff that aligns with me, and just sharing his opinion on it, yeah. and and it was a contrary pr- p- opinion, right? And yeah. she started getting on him, going, "You're not with, you're not down with the cause, and you just don't care. You're not on the front lines, yeah, to a black guy, yeah." And it's like, dude. What is wrong? What, what kind of tea are you guys drinking, dude? Yeah. That is some serious Kool Aid. You're gonna yeah. flip on the fucking the reason the whole shit's happening. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. So yeah, white people in Portland are fucking absurd. Yeah, it's the it's the savior complex. And it's weird. And it's a it's a weird guilt thing too there. I think because in places like that, there there's just not a lot of it's not a melting pot. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, it I, I think might a lot of people move with the white people yelling at all the minorities for not being minority enough. I well, guess. Well, it's it's literally like I think it has to do with our like roots at the roots out there. I don't want to claim it. It's not. I'm yeah. not part of that. Their roots out there. It's yeah. like. With Port with Oregon, they always had like, if I remember the history correctly, like we didn't have slaves in Oregon or whatever yeah. when it was founded, but we were like, if you come here, we'll kill you yeah. if you're black. You know yeah. what I mean? And it was like Jesus Christ. Yeah. So and then and then when they did let black people in, there was this whole fucked up thing about uh, Vanport. I think it's Vanport, and it was this little town that they made yeah. like right on the water yeah. where they kind of like kept all the black people that worked on the railroad and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like in it, like they, they promised them that they were going to build the, it flooded one time. Cause it was yeah. like poorly built, yeah. you know, and they had bars down there and they're like, you can't really hang out in the city yeah. where the white people are, but yeah. you can hang out in your little city we made for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. just keep working hard for us. Yeah. And then like they started getting angry because it flooded, I think. And like some shit happened. It was just really poorly maintained. And then the city said, okay, okay, you're right. This is fucked up. Yeah. It's 1982, whatever. We got it. I don't that remember. Late. Well, I don't remember what year it was, okay. but like it's 19, whatever. Yeah. We need to make some changes, guys. We're going to build you guys your own neighborhood, like in this side of North, North Portland, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be great, guys. We're going to take care of you. And they were like, we did it, right? They basically, uh, if I remember correctly, I saw some documentary that was uh, showing in Portland about this, but they... Uh, basically just strung it strung them out on that yeah. and then they built the memorial coliseum in in that same spot instead they built just the dirtiest white people shit to do they built a place for white people to play sports <laughs> you know and like big concerts and that place is still there i mean they don't really use it much anymore yeah. it's like the b it's yeah. like where the blazers play and then there's the shitty old one yeah but that shitty old one is like where they said they were going to build all the houses yeah for the 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 black people that were treated poorly yeah and then they you know so portland has this weird like guilt built into it right and there's just not a lot of there's not a lot of diversity there and so like when even when i come here and it's funny to me when i hear people like make jokes at the comedy clubs mm-hmm. about like how white austin is right yeah. and it is yeah but not even remotely compared to what i'm used to there's so many different there's so many different people here it's yeah. awesome yeah. and it's cool it's 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 once you really see like damn they're calling this place a white city and there's like 10 times more diversity here than there is where i grew up yeah yeah so portland's really fucking white yeah yeah i'd like you know I don't know. It's crazy. I mean, Austin's kind of got a similar thing. So, like, our gay street is 4th Street. Mm -hmm. And there's just all kinds of battles about wanting to tear down the bars there and make them high rises. Mm. But, like, the streets have, like, you know, like, rainbow crosswalks. Yeah. And we have two pride parades, one in June and one in August. Why do we have two pride parades? So, all the cities have them, like, at different times. Because, I mean, it's kind of like like Comic-Con where, like, people fly in. So like all the people doing the pride parade here, they don't just live here. Oh. They come here and it's like it's like a festival, it's, it's a like a party. Yeah. Oh, they're from like Dallas and shit, right? Well, I mean, like, it could be New York, it oh, could okay. be it could be anywhere. So right? it's a hu- it's like a big Yeah. So thing. like all the cities like in a different thing. yeah, time. So like yeah, we, we we do this thing. It's like a performative thing like, "Oh yeah, Austin, we stand with you and then we're going to tear down all your bars and build high rises <laughs> in their place." 
That's ridiculous. I, I don't know if they still like ha- like have it locked. Those bars up. are fun, dude. You yeah. ever been to one of them? Yeah. I went to Oil Can Henry's like one of the first times I came here because my girlfriend likes RuPaul and shit. Yeah. yeah. And they were doing like a drag show. Yeah. It was fun as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I fucking danced. Had a good time. It was awesome. Yeah, I went to uh, guys are buying me drinks and shit. I'm the, like, the, let's the, go. The, the, I think this is still going on, but there was like an emo night at Fourth and Co. Okay, I haven't the, been to Fourth. The, and Co. They, they would do emo bingo. Okay, but yeah, I didn't know that was like the gay street. I was just like, man, I'm getting hit on by a lot of dudes. <laughs> like, <laughs> isn't isn't emo night already pretty gay? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just there to like hear <laughs> emo music and stuff. Yeah. I went there for like like two months straight. I'm like, isn't emo night already kind of a drag show? It's yeah, like, isn't it already like a lot makeup of makeup and leather? Straight yeah. dudes wearing makeup and leather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not doing their hair. Tits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. Oh uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know, man. I uh, I hope that I think I think Portland will will rise up. It's just I knew in in that moment when all this was happening in the aftermath of it. I was like, it's gonna take a decade. Yeah, and I'm not gonna be here to to wait for it. I yeah, don't, I didn't I didn't shit in this bed, so yeah. I'm not gonna clean it up. Yeah, and I'm not gonna be here to support. I didn't. I don't support. And like all the people that I knew that I thought I was friends, you know, I have yeah. my core friends, and yeah. we all kind of have similar beliefs on yeah. it. And it, and just kind of like this is like too much. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not even that we're you know not down with the cause or whatever. It's like we're just this is a lot. Yeah, and you guys are acting stupid as fuck. Yeah, dude, and, and you guys sucks, are justifying man. it. You know what I mean? And you're yeah. acting dumb as fuck, so I'm out of here. And yeah. and then, you know, and if you share that opinion there, you can't even share that opinion there. Yeah. Because at the time anyway, because yeah. you'd be deemed as a racist or yeah. or somebody that wasn't for the co- oh what, you hate black you love cops or you yeah. you know, boot liquor, they love yeah, that yeah. one. And it's like, uh, dude, yeah. no, like I just you're just fucking annoying. Yeah. You're just you're just insufferable. Dude. I don't want to be around people that are this militant about anything. Yeah. And then you come here and everything's like chill. Yeah. It's like, oh, you believe that? I disagree with you, but right on, dude. Yeah. You want to go get some barbecue? Yeah. You know, cool. Yeah. It's Let's great. go to Barton Springs and but, talk about our differences. <laughs> yeah. When 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 I first uh, visited Texas, I drove here from San Diego, and when I got into Texas, gas was a dollar sixty. Oh shit! I had never seen that my whole life in Southern California. When you moved here? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been here? Three years. Okay. Yeah. So like it was a dollar sixty, and it's one thing that like upsets you when you move from one place to the other, is that like there's no reason San Diego should be that expensive. It's dude. all the regulations. It's all dude. It's such a scam. Yeah. I had the same thing with with Oregon when I left Oregon, dude. Yeah. And even now, still, it's yeah. like close to six dollars. Yeah. And and for all my Oregon people listening, I just drove by the H E B on my way over here. Just peeked at them gas prices. Yeah. It's a it's a clean two thirty. Yeah. You know oh, what I mean? I was it's thinking like, two fifty. No, yeah, it's a like clean yeah. two thirty seven. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know I'm not lying. Yeah. I remember the number because every time I see it, I go, Yeah, damn. Yeah. I love living God in bless America, America, dude. Yeah, God yeah, bless yeah. America. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, dude, the whole and then the sales tax in Oregon is yeah. like one of the highest in the country. Yeah. And there's human shit everywhere. Yeah. And you're like, dude. And the other thing, too, that people don't think about the homeless shit and all the crazy, dirty shit, they think it's just in the city or whatever. Yeah. It's in the woods. Yeah. And there's videos of people burning down trees and cutting down trees. And there's a lot of talk and thought and conspiracy that these huge forest fires and stuff, and nobody wants to talk about this yeah. stuff. That those huge forest fires often could be maybe started by fucking communes of yeah. bums that are living in the fucking woods, yeah. shooting up heroin, yeah, with needles that they that the that the city gave them. You know what I mean? And it's so, like they're cutting down trees. And it's funny too because Oregon cares so much about the environment and the yeah. trees and the forests and yeah. preserving the nature. Yeah, it's like okay, well then pop into the woods on the way to Bend yeah. or like the way to Eugene. I bet you that that. They are riddled with like fucking trash yeah. and and burn sites and shit. And it's yeah. like you guys aren't doing shit with that tax money. And yeah. then the gas is seven dollars. Yeah. And it's raining all the time here. Yeah. And the city won't let anybody build new buildings. So the, all the buildings look like they're like eighties build eighties office buildings. Yeah. It looks like that scene from Anchorman at the yeah. beginning of the San Diego hasn't changed. Hasn't yeah. changed at all. And it's like, dude, like this is a it's just a scam and then yeah. the mayor is all in cahoots with the yeah. like the mayor's the the simp for the governor yeah you know which we had the same governor for like t- 10 12 years or some shit however long she's yeah. allowed she took that yeah. whole time got reelected yeah and then if you look into it her daddy 
was the governor of California for like fucking yeah as many years as he was allowed to be. Yeah. And it's all this creepy. It's yeah. all creepy cahoots. And yeah. then here it's nice because you've got the Republican dad, yeah. like, you know, anti abortion guy, yeah. uh, who everyone hates, yeah. is in is in is in uh is in office and the governor. Yeah. And then the mayor is like always too liberal here, so they butt heads. And I swear, I think that friction of a mayor and a governor not getting along is what creates a balanced good place to live yeah that's what i think i think you need that like balance of like the city the governor you need your politicians to hate each other yeah because if it's all batman and joker and they're all in fucking cahoots yeah it, no it yeah, becomes so, arkham city so san diego is actually like more of a red city uh in a blue state and so the mayor was trying to like keep san diego open and it was like the attorney generals and the governor like cracking down on san diego and being like no you guys can't open so like i ended up like losing my job um, we like reopened for a day. Yeah. Uh, Portland did it too. Oh, no, no. Well, we were shut down. Then the mayor reopened it for a day. And then the attorney general was like, nah. And then we shut down like the next day. And so, like, I'm like back at my parents' house. And it's like an El Nino wind. And we're like really worried about wildfires. So they shut off our power. So I'm oh like my at my God. parents' house, sharing a room with my older brother, <laughs> playing just, Pictionary. No, just yeah, just <laughs> sitting in the dark, no power. I was like, dude, like, tell screw me a ghost this. story. I was like, I was like, look, like Rogan just moved to Austin. I don't know if it's gonna be like a viable comedy city, but at least while this crap's going on, I can have my own apartment. Yeah, you know, and like have a job and like right. live my life. You know, uh, I socially distance enough from like zero to twenty four. Not well, having and that was all bullshit and, anyway. Yeah, the whole that was came out to be all bullshit. Oh, dude, I all fought. I fought against bullshit. that a hundred percent of the way. I do. We, we, my buddies and I, we were doing like shows on the beach. Yeah, like the cops would shut us nice. down. Um, You're such a fucking rock star, dude. How yeah, do I like, dude. Yeah, dude? I, I was. I was like, dude, like, like, screw all of this, because like, I mean, I took like a microbiology course where. <laughs> Like we've figured out, so if it's human to human transmission, the more contagious it is, the less deadly it is. Because if it kills the host instantly, it can't be both. It can't, yeah, it can't transfer. Like that's the reason Ebola didn't go anywhere. When somebody's like shitting and puking blood, nobody needs to tell you to like, hey, socially distance. Nobody's hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> when yeah. you're yeah. shooting and you're yeah. shooting piss out yours yeah. or out of your ass. Dude. Yeah, yeah. And then nobody's like, hey, you should quarantine. You know, like yeah. it's all like fairly evident. And and to me it was uh, it's like when I was like arguing with people against it I would assume I would assume that their proposition is true and then like argue against it that way so like I remember reading news stories like you know people were, like washing their groceries and the, it was like oh if you have COVID in your car right yeah the air in your car comes out through your exhaust so they were finding like COVID particles and car exhaust and I was like how long do you honestly expect well, to you stay remember, away you remember the thing where they tested the orange yeah. And it had co tested positive for yeah. COVID or whatever. And so, saying. like, I, I knew the concept of viral load. I'm like, just because something has it on there doesn't mean that you're going to catch it. And also, like, uh, it's like, how long do you honestly expect to stay away from car exhaust and Amazon packages? I was like, yeah. I, you know, I'm a prime member. I'm going to have <laughs> COVID in two days yeah. when, when my new underwear comes Dude, in. Dude, and the funny thing, too, and, well, and this is not funny, but it's, like, the, the weird thing is that, like there's so, in mu it, to bring it back to like metal kids and, yeah. and music right yeah and like metal metal like uh celebrities or whatever yeah. you want to call you know yeah. singer from big band yeah you know uh rage against the machine even all these guys simped so hard for the vaccine for clicks and it makes me so mad because not you know regardless of my stance on yeah. on the vaccine shit which yeah. it's like i didn't fucking take the shot yeah you know what i mean i and I, I fucking still did whatever i still made it work baby yeah, yeah you know what i mean we still did it all yeah and and it's like it, it's but it's it the annoying thing is that they told they told you that you were a bad person if you had shows or wanted to go to a show or whatever yeah. because you were going to make people sick and potentially kill them right yeah and then but my thing is hmm what about all the people who like said you better get this fucking vaccine on twitter and yeah. influenced you know like all these big rock star guys influencing people to go get the vaccine yeah and we don't really know they're they're definitely just like there for sure is a percentage, whether it's small or big, yeah. of people that took it and died or yeah. took it and got something something happened to them yeah. because of it. And those people don't get any that nobody's ever gonna resurface those tweets and be like, look at what Randy Blythe said about the vaccine. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like and and for me, 
I just can't forgive any of that stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry. I will never forgive you for for shutting shows down and being being super pro. Yeah. Like fuck you if you go to a show. Yeah. And 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 you know and you're gonna you don't care about people. You're gonna get and then and then you better get the vaccine or you're not my friend or like yeah. don't come to our shows if it you're was, not vaccinated. It was all blackmail. It was yeah. it was all blackmail and it's like those people deserve to get there. Those people should be roasted. Yeah. Those people should be roasted. Yeah. Because because I can go pull up tweets from almost every big band yeah. and show you where the singer said, Get the vaccine. You're stupid if you don't think Randy Bly I, I said some shit about him on the last podcast yeah. that I did and I was like, Ooh, I better go do my research. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I called him I called him a simp. Yeah. And I was like I was like, ah he and I, I love Lamb of God. I love yeah. Randy Blythe. But yeah. I was like, and you know what? Okay, you know, it's a lot of people in metal too. This is yeah. another thing. Yeah. Are afraid to call say how they feel about shit because they're like what if Randy Mike wants to take me on tour yeah, yeah. someday I don't want to screw up yeah, you yeah. know and I don't give a fuck about that shit yeah. honestly fuck you yeah. you know you go and look at his te his tweets have not aged well buddy and they're yeah. only a year old yeah. it's going to get age horribly yeah. it, there's a bunch of these articles that like, you're a fucking idiot I'm not a, I take the vaccine cuz I'm not a dumbass yeah. my friends he's like bragging about how his friends are well read and like yeah. my friends have PhDs and they say to get it and like all this stuff that just aged so terribly, not not regardless of how you feel about it, yeah. it didn't work very well, yeah. and it didn't have anything to do with us getting metal shows back. Yeah. So you're full of shit. You yeah. just said what you thought would get you little brownie points or whatever yeah. your opinion was. You thought it was better than someone else's, yeah. and then you probably maybe could have led to somebody that loves your band getting that shot so they could go to the Lamb of God show and maybe something happened to that person. And you didn't take that into account when you were making those statements. Yeah. And still probably don't, still probably thinks he's smarter than everybody because he yeah. fucking wears glasses and reads books. And yeah. it's just like, I fucking hate people like that. Yeah. I'm sorry. And maybe he's cool and I'm, up it, you know what, I, you know, and the thing is, I'm also not starry eyed. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, yeah. it, it, and if he doesn't want to take me on tour because I fucking said some shit about how dumb he sounded in his tweets about the vaccine, I don't yeah. want to fucking go on tour with Lamb of God anyway. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, and so it's like people are just too, like, I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever I have to do to get an opportunity to yeah. play arenas with Lamb of God. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. You said some dumb shit. I'm not going to – the me, the metal people are so just like, what, whatever's hot right now, I'm yeah. going to tweet that. Yeah. That's what – they all fucking do that, and yeah. it's so annoying. Yeah. It, it, even if there were, like, no deaths from the vaccine and, like, no side effects, there's still, like, all the deaths of despair, everybody who picked up drinking again, everybody who killed themselves. Yes. Oh, my the God. Lockdown. Not even to mention all that shit. Yeah. And so, they were all pro-lockdown and pro-whatever. As long as it takes yeah. so we can come back safe. Yeah. And the whole thing was just fucking bullshit. Yeah. And and, and, and I knew that pretty much immediately because, like, when they were talking about the vaccine. So, like, I got, uh, uh, like, in 2018, I got vaccinated against HPV. Um and they were telling me it's only like 60% effective and it's three shots and it's going to take like eight months for you to become like fully, you know, immunized or whatever. And it's only 60% effective. So like during like the two week shutdown, I was thinking like, even if we had a vaccine today, like we don't know like what the vaccine scheduling could be. If it's anything like HPV, it could only be 60% effective and it could take eight months. It's like, right. do we think that we're going to be able to hide from this thing for oh, dude? And like the, all that information is so exhausting to me. Like, I don't care. Yeah, I never cared about any vaccine for anything ever for yeah. malaria for anything yeah. that was in the news during any presidential candidacy, yeah. d uh, any year. Swine yeah. flu, never cared, never yeah. gave a fuck. Yeah, just you know what I mean. Can I get a cheeseburger and play video games? It's yeah. like you know what I mean. Like just I don't care, and it never mattered until they like forced it to matter. Yeah, and then that one ended up not even. It wasn't the end. It wasn't the apocalypse. We yeah. watched way too many movies. Yeah, you know what I mean. We thought we thought that that was gonna. They literally ripped the whole. Thing off of a fucking actual movie yeah you know it's like it's just it you know yeah, i'm not so, saying that it isn't real and that people didn't die from it because i had relatives that almost died from it yeah so but I, what i'm saying is that there was a lot of fucked up bullshit and lies yeah. and a lot of money being made yeah and so and that shit is all just so true and easy to verify yeah. and i said it from the very beginning and like you i was like fuck this shit and i've talked about this on here too but i was like fuck all this shit this is all bullshit fuck the government right guys yeah. and then everybody's like whoa hot take whoa ba ew bad yeah. take yikes you know and so i was like like, okay, I'm not going to talk about this. Dude, comedy audiences during the shutdown were the best because it was all the coolest people being like, this could kill me. 
Yeah, dude. Spit in my mouth. Who cares? <laughs> dude, they were the best. And all the, all the pussies stayed home. Dude, yeah. like it was. Tony, yeah. can you get me the whiskey, dude? I'm talking shit. I need some whiskey, dude. But uh, I'm sorry. Got, uh, up on the oh, really? That's fine. We can we can switch we can switch uh, switch cards. How long have we been going? Uh, hour forty-eight. Oh, let's keep it rocking, dude. Yeah, you got yeah. some time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if he's got to switch the card, I got to use the restroom. All right, let's take a pee pee break real quick. Yeah, we'll be get, right back. You get your whiskey. All right, and we're back. All right, cool. All right, so last we were we were talking about how Randy Blythe is a bitch. <laughs> Damn it. No. No, I never said that. I want to go on tour. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I honestly, I think he's probably just a good person who's probably also dumber than he thinks he is. And, you know, he also was like, you know, he's not, the, he's not, he, he probably just is trying to be a good person and do the right thing. And then, and that's then, how people get hurt. That's how they get hurt. They're trying that, to, that's they're why try- I don't like people who think that they're, that they're good people. Right, because they, I think that they accidentally hurt people. Like if you think you know CPR yeah. and you're like conducting yes. CPR or Heimlich, and, yeah, and you're just breaking somebody's ribs and you're like not self aware to be like, hey, this thing I'm doing is like actually harmful. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that's where like a lot of people get hurt. I mean, like Australia for a while was like building quarantine camps. Yeah, you know, and the only reason why this all that stuff stopped, while the lockdown stopped, it's not because COVID went away and it's not because the vaccine worked. It's because you know people like you and I. We were like, hey, we're not, we're not putting up with this shit. Right. We're we're gonna we're gonna keep going with it, and and eventually, like, the the truth and stuff will come out. I knew that the the vaccine wasn't gonna be effective because they were just peer pressuring the shit out of you to to do it. Oh, you can't work, you can't you know travel, you can't go to the gym. We're gonna make. I, I was also like working in the restaurant industry. And I was like, well, like working takeout, and suddenly I was an essential employee. It's like oh, I had no idea that I was like such an important oh, yeah, they, person in the they, fabric of they society. They made non-important people heroes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The I, pizza guy is a hero. Yeah, and and like not that had, the pizza guy is not important. He is a hero at a party. When yeah, he shows up with the pizza. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. Just because you're doing a job during the pandemic that they're allow, it's the only thing that they're allowing yeah. people to do for work. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I, I had a I had a piece of paper in my car from PF Chang saying that I was allowed to like be driving from home after the curfew. <laughs> you know what I mean? From PF Chang. From PF Chang's. PF Chang's gave me a piece of paper that I was in a gave you a whole pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dude, I actually, I actually like loved the 10 p.m. curfew because I, I was like dating my neighbor at the time, uh-huh. and she was like getting ready, and and for some reason like the curfew had slipped my mind. Uh, it was like nine o'clock. She's like, I'm like, oh, how long is it going to take for you to get ready? She said about an hour. We go out and everything's closed. Oh, and it's like, oh no, I guess we'll just have to go home, have sex, and go to bed on time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. Yeah. <laughs> like as somebody who doesn't really like yeah, doing things, yeah. <laughs> I was like, dude, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like. I said, I don't think. I don't think like people like Randy's like a bad person. It's just so cringy, and I just it's so they. A lot of these rock star guys acted so not punk rock about yeah. that whole situation, yeah. and I just lost a lot of respect for a lot of like badass musician guys who yeah. cucked out for the government and big pharma, and who sucked big pharma's dick. The yeah. guy from I can't I can't support Rage Against the Machine anymore. I can't. Especially they're they're like, not raging against nothing. Yeah. They're sitting on they're ri- driving Bugattis and telling you to get vaccinated. And, and, it's and their like, songs are like "fuck you, I won't do what you tell me." And then they are it's doing the exactly dumbest thing. What they told them, I can't stand it. And yeah. then like somebody just recently told me about Dave Grohl. Somebody told me about how he like they were pressuring Homeboy to get the back. And that's what, I didn't know. That's what like they thought they think killed that dude. Yeah, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Was like vaccine. See, they don't want to talk about that. Yeah, stuff is all just like sweep it just. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean, and yeah. it's like, and then dude, like Dave must feel like shit. You yeah. know what I mean, like because he was the one that's like the whole band's got to get it or whatever. We yeah, gotta fucking, and it's like, dude, yeah, you in got, order and, to and, work. And and again, it's like I don't think that any of those dudes probably should have shared their opinion because we didn't know what was going on because yeah. we were being Houdinied. We were being we were being fucked. Yeah, and and nobody knew. Even if you're like the vaccine's bullshit, fuck you, like. That was wrong to do at that time too. Yeah. Just like telling people to go get this thing was was wrong. We should have been like, let's not do anything until we figure out what's going on. Yeah. Like that's that that was the only logical advice anybody could have given. But it was just the high horsing. Yeah. And like the, 
Yeah. And, and the trendiness, the, the I swear that like if tomorrow it became trendy to say that the vaccine is bad and the government's bad, like all the metal people yeah. in the community would, would be like on it. would yeah. flip on it. They yeah. fucking do they flip they 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 post and do they're not their own people a lot of time. They yeah. just will do they're 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 desperate for clicks and clout. Yeah. And it's the only thing they have is this fucking band thing they're doing. Yeah. And they just they they just need it to be successful so bad that they'll they'll say whatever they think is in the in the good graces of the public's opinion yeah yeah and it's that is so the opposite of what rock and roll and fucking me metal and, yeah. and and aggressive music is yeah. supposed to be it's supposed to be fuck what everyone else is saying i'm gonna do my own thing and yeah, say yeah. my own shit yeah and it's just it's just annoying but i mean we don't you know i'm not here to fucking it's 2023 we're not talking about vaccines anymore dude. No, <laughs> no it is it is interesting to talk about and i think it's like you can't let you almost can't let it die down now because we we have to be able to go back and so we've had our time now to yeah. be like let's forget about all that because that was stressful yeah and we're let's just let's let's enjoy life again yeah and we've been doing that for like a year or two now yeah. can we go back and go hey that was fucked up yeah you know what I mean well, wait a minute well, it was like it, it's probably the cra oh, hopefully the craziest thing that'll happen in our lifetimes Bro, I, I hope that there's nothing that tops <laughs> well it's gonna have to top it because they can't do that again yeah they can't you you're gonna come out with a covid number two tomorrow and tell everybody to go inside hell no dude like some some colleges tried bringing back like a masking policy like hilarious dude i would see people wearing masks in mosh pits i was like dude you think those things work yeah dude you fucking dude you think that those you think things those things, are... things will stop a bullet dude bro th th there was a band i used to like man and, and call them out bro yes yeah, so, call them so, out yeah, yeah spanish love songs fuck spanish no i'm just kidding what, well, what's wrong with... well they they were like they were like oh if you guys could like mask up like telling the crowd to like put a mask on. Oh, that's so fucking. And it was gay. like it was like 2022. Ugh. And I'm like, okay, well, you have to come to terms with something. Do you think people are getting sick and dying at your concerts? Because if so, then you're then you're a bad. If you believe that, yeah. then, then you're a bad person. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. Yeah. And like, because a mask is not gonna work, especially in a mosh pit. Damn. Yeah, it's so silly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, I heard that and I was like, dude, like I'm sad, but like I'm not pathetic. So now, like, when I listen to their songs, it's like, like, yeah, it's sad. And, like, I used to relate to it, but now it's like, no, this is like a pathetic thing, and yeah. and I'm not staying in this place. This is just how I feel right now. Yeah. But I'm gonna do stuff to like get out of this. Uh, when you left San Diego, is that what you're talking about? No, I saw it here in San Antonio. Oh, it's in San Antonio. Yeah, it was 2022. And they were trying to get people to wear masks? Yeah, they were like, oh, well, like, we're not going to make you, but like, if you guys could, like, put on a mask. And I was like, these Dude, fucking. Dude, cringe. Did you leave? <laughs> well, I was there you to see the Wonder show. Years. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that band slapped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn. But, uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, I know, I heard that, and I was just like, bro, because. So, how out of touch can you be? Like, you're, like, nobody, I don't care how well you think you know your fan base, nobody's cucking that hard for masks right now, dude. Dude. Nobody wants you to. If if that's your even 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 two years ago yeah if that's your opinion of your fan base then you need to you need to do a checkup because it's like that's not cool anymore <laughs> like like you know the whole band thing is how do I stay relevant and trendy right yeah and yeah. it's like that's not cool anymore dude yeah. that was two years that was three years ago that's like, not cool like, like during the thing I was like I was like respectful of like what people wanted to do but I was like never right. gonna force anything on them like uh, at, at PF Chang's it was like oh if you were vaccinated you don't have to wear a mask anymore. Yeah. So like I stopped wearing a mask and then everybody assumed I got vaccinated. Nice. <laughs> I was like, nice. cool. And like, like I, I didn't care. But then uh, there was like this old couple and they requested me to be their server because they thought since I wasn't wearing a mask that I was vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, I was like, somebody else has to wait on them because <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm going to respect. You're like, this is such a dumb sandwich. <laughs> yeah. This is such a this is such a sandwich of yeah. different layers of dumb. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so they wanted a they wanted a maskless server because they thought the maskless server was unvaccinated. That's so. Funny. And I was like, bro, I was like, I can't wait on them because like I want to respect. Right. They so you were good. And you were older. You're like, no, I'm not. Good. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, hey, Sam, if you right. if you could if you could wait on them, that would yeah. be great. I did a show in in San Diego, uh, and this is where like like I didn't know I was uh, an attractive person. I don't really think of myself in that way. Because uh, I've done comedy shows with uh, this group that does burlesque shows. And they were having this like big Christmas party show uh, and they wanted to fly me in to, to do the show. And I'm like, but there's plenty of other funny 
comedians in in San Diego or whatever, I'm like telling jokes like in between acts or whatever this lady was like oh yeah if you could come up with some christmas themed jokes that'd be great and i'm like oh yeah that would have been cool if i had thought to do that i thought <laughs> i was like well you guys hired me i'm gonna do like my regular thing and then when like, was this uh this was like winter 2022 okay uh so they're flying maybe, maybe, maybe so they're flying you from here to go back home to yeah yeah show. yeah to go back home to to host this uh like christmas show and they were okay. like paying me a bunch and stuff um <laughs> And so they're, they're like having us like check people's vax cards because they lied and said that everybody in their troop was vaccinated and we all weren't. <laughs> and so I'm unvaccinated checking kids because the, the first one was like a family friendly show, mm -hmm. uh, like like no nudity and stuff. Um, burlesque gets wild. Right. Um, <laughs> so I'm like checking like I'm like asking parents for like their kids vax cards. And I was like, if you could just show me anything well like, like i was just trying to make it clear i was like just flash me your home screen yeah yeah i was like the last thing you're expecting is the person checking for vax cards to be unvaccinated yeah. <laughs> i was like what kind of dumb what kind of dumb shit is this oh shit um dude. but then this like lady I, I don't know what kind of accent she had but she was like on the second show the adult one she was like i'm afraid you're gonna have to lose your shit and i was like oh that's why i'm here Oh, you were there to strip. That they wanted me to like tell jokes and also like and maybe, take your clothes off. Yeah, maybe take some of my clothes. Like not get like fully nude, but I was like, oh, like I didn't. You're like that's gonna have to be more expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I had like a Christmas. Like, You're gonna have to pay on. me stripper rates. Yeah, I, I took my uh, I took the button up shirt I had off, but I kept like the blazer on because nice. I was just like too shy to like yeah. actually walk out there shirtless. I had like no to let those abs. You got abs, dude. Uh, I used to. You're one of the four comedians with abs, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're, they're not. It's like just super you and defined. Zach Black, dude. I mean, compared to <laughs> other comedians, yeah, I'm in I'm in good shape. Yeah. But like, I had to do I did. Uh, like work out for health reasons i had high blood pressure at 19 oh shit and like i wasn't even that fat but i feel like i might have that how do you know if you have that i mean they, they just uh, they put like that blood pressure cuff uh -huh. on me and they looked at the numbers and they're like that's not right that's, that can't be they they did it i haven't again. been to the doctor in 12 15 years they so they they did it again probably, yeah. and they looked at the numbers and they were like oh like are you like on caffeine and i was like i was like well, i had like a monster energy and they were like oh okay well um Normally we would put you on blood pressure medication, but because you're so young, we don't want your body to become like dependent on the medication. So you're just gonna have to. I'm just gonna have to exercise for the rest of my life. Yeah. So like that's why I Damn. do it. Like I don't do it for like ego. Like oh, I'm gonna be so. That's kind of nice though. And like pull like so many chicks. Well, but then like on stage I got like judged, and now with like Matt Rife, like oh well, it's just another cute guy, mm. you know. And it's like oh, you don't know. Relax, dude. You're not that cute. No, thank you <laughs> I, I would appreciate that i've gotten all the negatives of being good looking and like none of the positives some just shave your head bald clean <laughs> that's what you have to do at this dude, point dude. i got a fat head so like <laughs> i had to work out for that and also my head is so huge i needed to like make the rest of me bigger so that right. i didn't look like i was a bobblehead <laughs> you know yeah like these headphones like they don't they're, they're like my that's like, crazy you yeah. put them on you're like do these get bigger and i'm like yeah like because because for a minute it looked like you just had them on the smallest setting yeah. but you have them on the i big, have them on the max i have setting. them on the max setting yeah. too i have a pretty large cranium as yeah well. i'm like a size eight but you're you're those headphones do look smaller on you than i feel like they yeah. should. oh dude i got i got a fat head <laughs> i got i got pushed into a fat chick in high school and pushed our, into her yeah like somebody pushed you yeah somebody pushed me and like our heads collided and then she like hit the floor you survived yeah i got Man. a concussion from it and so they're like sitting me like against the wall and everybody looking by is just seeing this and she was like 300 pounds this is like a huge goth chick <laughs> And just like out on the floor and everybody's looking by and they think i intentionally knocked her out <laughs> oh shit and it's like like look like some of the things with like body positive i, I disagree with most of it <laughs> but Come i'm on, still dude. i'm still going to treat them like human beings like i'm not going to be like glad that you got knocked out but these kids were like i got dapped up like th 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 this dude <laughs> you was really like, got her dude du yeah so like like people were like happy she got knocked out and i was like was what? she was she a bitch was she rude no she was just really fat <laughs> what the, oh. and so people were like oh yeah we don't like her oh that's rude and it's like like, like i'm not about that either 
Right. I, you know, I think people should like lose weight and be healthy and n- sure. not be sick. Shouldn't be going around. Nobody's going around knocking out fat chicks. Yeah, and then and the, and the fact that people like thought I intentionally knocked her out were like, dude, sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> I was like, bro, like I'm not. I have a head wound too. <laughs> yeah, it took like it took six firemen to like pick her up on this. Oh my god! And like put her in. I was like, bro. How did they? Did anybody? Did you almost get in trouble because somebody like a anybody of authority no. thought that you hit her or something? No, or? no, no. I got I got pushed. They know that you got pushed. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, because I mean, what like, was it like a funny let's push Andrew into the fat girl thing, or was it just kind of like a hallway, like the the rustle of everything? No, got no, pushed? no. I was like with a buddy. We were we were walking between classes in California at outdoor schools. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, there was just like a, a large group of people. So I jokingly pushed my friend. I was like, oh, mosh pit, and then he pushed me. But then he pushed me into somebody that like shoved me. Yeah, and then that happened like two more times, and then I got shoved, and then my head just boom, and then her head was like, <laughs> and then she like hit the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm glad glad she's okay. Yeah. I'm well, also glad of all the people that I could hit I that it was somebody that could take that it. could take it. That's yeah. true. If it was if, if it was like a hundred and ten pound petite that might have put her out. Could have snapped her neck. Oh my god. But you, you gotta know. watch that head as a weapon. Oh dude, dude it that is head is like you're just carrying this bowling ball around with oh, you dude, everywhere. If I was WWE, like my signature move would just be uh, like if a you were, diving headbutt. <laughs> if you were being the Crispin Wall, dude. Yeah. <laughs> if you were being like held down by an assailant yeah. and your own he had both your arms, right? Yeah. yeah. You would have no qualms yeah, with just, just giving crack. Up, like a movie. Yeah. Like and you're like that guy would never survive that head yeah. bang or whatever yeah. but, or that head butt but yeah. you just like Pele just fucking like oh, a soccer player dude dude yeah just with how large my head is and the fact that I'm like 200 pounds you yeah. know it's like it's a uh, if it's, you work on that neck even more dude you get that those those muscles so you can really swing it oh dude you know yeah what I mean? get the iron neck you machine, really do have just... a lot of control yeah like if you're really trying to put some pain on somebody with your head yeah. You can really do a lot. Yeah. It's a weapon. Dude. Yeah. I mean, at the it's time, risky. Uh, like, I, I forgot, like, some chords on guitar from that. I was, like, playing guitar at the time. I forgot yeah. how to do a D chord. Like, there was just, like, some shit I forgot because, like, my head got rocked. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. From that? From yeah. the goth chick? Yeah. Damn, so she put up a battle for you. Well, That's Dana yeah. White's next thing, by the way. Yeah. Is, like, is just it's people smacking their heads into each other. Yeah, yeah. Instead of the slap fights, it's yeah. headbutt fights. Dude, slap fight is yeah. so sick. Let's see how fast we can get to CTE. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the slap fighting shit's crazy. Dude, because, um, like, I was saying, like, the fact that, like, slap fight is popular, it's, like, like soccer takes so long sometimes that they do penalty shots. <laughs> And I was saying, like, you don't see that, like, in boxing. Like, oh, this match is going on too long. Hold his arms behind his yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's hold his arms behind his back and do some penalty swings. <laughs> yeah. But now they do. <laughs> do they? The slap fights. It's like, well, yeah, let's just get straight to it. Uh, we we want to see Can we some... pull up some slap slap fight? What's it called? I think slap? it's a slap, slap fight. Is it just called slap? Yeah. Oh, Portland, I hope you can fix yourself, you fucking psychopath. 100 days of protesting. You fucking psychopath idiots. I love you, but you need to fix yourself. Yeah, power slap knockout. See, power slap, it's, it's 48 called. 48 seconds <laughs> for five of uh, them. Don't, I wouldn't do YouTube. If we can find a Reddit or so, anything, anything other than YouTube. I mean, I don't know if they'll pull us from YouTube, actually. Let's just try it with no audio. Just take it out. We got pulled on Michael Ridley's podcast. We were watching Bollywood movies, and they yeah. they they blocked it from the whole world, just showing it with no audio. Yeah, it's crazy. They know, they know the algorithms know. This would be the Patreon exclusive, a YouTube video they could look up themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna put all the Randy Blythe stuff on Patreon. Yeah, <laughs> it's like just boom, boom, dude. Slap is awesome. Four, number four. What was that? The top five? Yeah. Oh my god, I love the slow motion. Damn. Oh, are those chicks? Yeah. Nice. She did a front flip. <laughs> Apparently, this is the most engaging. Have you heard Dana White talk about this recently? The slap fight, slap fight is the most engaging, uh, shared viewed most viewed thing on the internet basically yeah. and yeah. it's weird because like when i see him i don't really watch him i'm like huh 
But it's like it's it's interesting because it's like you know we have such an, a short attention span. Yeah, it's, it's like, like let's get straight to the knockout. let's just get straight to the slap. Like yeah. the, and so people are scrolling. They know that if they watch that video for two seconds, they're gonna see the smack. Yeah, and it's like, and he posted recently like the numbers from all the different sports. Yeah, and it's like, it's crazy. That, yeah, and it's funny because nobody that I know is like you gotta watch slap fight. Like nobody's nobody's trying to like, hey dude, let's get together and watch the slap fight. But it's just because it's like an internet thing. Yeah, it's just, it's just genius. People and, like the dumbest well, shit. It's genius, and it's kind of like a, like a, a sign of the times. It's like, um, I always compare stuff to the Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather fight. Like, if you're not a boxing fan, it's a boring fight because Floyd is very technical and is like dodging punches and stuff. You want to see stuff like the slab fight. So it's like in order for like an art form or something to like make enough money, you have to attract like not just the hardcore fans who are all about like the technicality mm -hmm. and like you UFC know. is a perfect example of of a split fan base. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just want to see like the craziest, like bloodiest matches. Right. Some people, you know, they can appreciate like the technicality of it. So like comedy is kind of like the same thing, you know, with like stuff being hack. It's like. Well, if all your jokes are, like, too niche, like, you're not going to go anywhere. If you're doing metalhead jokes, like we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you got to have jokes that, like, like appeal to more people. Um, I don't try to, like, write specifically. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, that's a lot because I said sometimes, like, I try to, like, write cleaner. I do, like, like go through phases, but I'm never, like, if it's not something I want to write about, I don't. Yeah. You know, I, that's why I don't think I could be a writer. They're like, oh, well, like make a sketch about this like I, you know i don't i don't want to yeah you probably could do it you could be in a, a room of people right like like throwing riff ideas out like you'd probably be a good editor you know what i mean i could but all the funny ideas at least with like snl and stuff like that like the people on the show are funny the reason why everything comes out like trash is because like oh we don't want to upset the advertisers right it's the writer's room yeah like like Shane Gillis was on SNL. He's hilarious, and if you look up his sketches, he never did. He actually go on SNL? No, he got he got canceled before it even came right, out. Right, that's what he was I thought. Doing an Asian accent, and he's the biggest comedian in the world right now. Yeah, now he's like one of yeah the, one of the largest comedians, and all of his sketches are gold. Oh, Gillian Keeves is amazing. Yeah, yeah, amazing, and none of them would have got through the you know the industry barrier. You're, you already know they're getting a Netflix deal. Yeah, you already know that they're that they're probably working on that. Maybe right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm. You know what I mean? I'm. I'm. I would. They would be foolish as fuck. Yeah. And if they're if Netflix isn't trying to get it, I'm not saying Shane would be. I'm saying Netflix yeah. would be stupid yeah. as fuck. Yeah. If they weren't like begging them for Gillian Keeves. Yeah. And Shane's probably just like, mm, send another contract in six months with a higher number. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. nope. Oh, you want Gillian Keeves? You didn't. You know, maybe you know, two, a billion dollar. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, how far can we push it? How yeah. famous can I get before I? take a deal with them on the Gillian Key because yeah. that, that's money bro yeah that is the funniest thing since Chappelle's show yeah it's fucking hilarious topical yeah. it's amazing and a lot of people the beauty of it for me and I notice this a lot of time like I see it with restaurants because I'm yeah. big with restaurants around here yeah a lot of times the restaurants get so wrapped up in how popular they get locally yeah that they don't realize uh, or excuse me, how popular they get just in general, that yeah. they don't realize how much potential they still have yeah. to grow locally. Yeah. Like like my my, my buddies, uh, Leroy and Lewis, they're one of the, they're top five on the top, they're number five on the top 50 barbecue spots. They're about to open up a yeah. brick and mortar, right? Yeah. They, if you ask 10 people that grew up here or that live here yeah. about Leroy and Lewis, nine of them probably haven't been yet, haven't yeah. heard of it. So they're like, like the people that know about barbecue and that are like into it, they yeah. have that niche nailed. Yeah. But there's so, what I think is really fun and inspiring for me is when I see like the potential is like still there. Yeah. Like you're already so big yeah. and so popular and yeah. you're on the list. Yeah. Like, like you guys have made it and you're still have potential. Nobody knows about you yet. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like that is so cool. And it's the same thing with Gillian Keeves where yeah. it's like n nine out of 10 people that I show that yeah. they're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. It's great. And it has so much potential to be seen yeah. by new eyes yeah. and for new fans. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. The, the skits, the writers do kind of fuck up the skits sometimes or like the people that the, it's, the, it's not the writers. It's just all like the stipulations and rules and stuff like that. Right. You know, it's it, hard to do a mainstream show like 
they, they don't want to like wall. yeah they, they they don't want to piss off the advertisers like right. like Shane will you know tell you himself he didn't like really make any money off of all the Gillian Keefe's thing at least not from like, the thing itself oh really you yeah. know maybe he, like got more fans that like bought more tickets and stuff sure but like yeah like people don't want to advertise on there really? I, I think I think we're gonna see a lot uh, less of that because like like Disney is just. Like if somebody says that they're boycotting Disney, it's like, okay, well, are you boycotting them because there was like a lesbian couple in Buzz Lightyear, or Bro. is it because you think that they support Israel? You know what I mean? Dude, <laughs> like, like there's so many like like reasons to like. <sighs> well, Disney's doing that woke thing that like even like people like we were just talking about with the whole vaccine thing. Yeah, you know, like the thing that people do where they have basically shot themselves in the foot because you you the 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 snake always eats itself with that woke stuff yeah. right because you set all these rules like all yeah. these landmines out yeah and then you're trying not to step on them yeah you know what i mean yeah and it's like it's inevitable that you're gonna step on one you're gonna do the wrong you're gonna say something about israel and always you're gonna you're gonna thing. you're gonna israel when you should have palestine yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. That one down, dude. <laughs> You're I'm gonna Israel when you should have Palestine. Uh, but no, that that it's like it's, it's you can't. You're you're setting up little death traps for yourself with that shit because yeah. the 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 cycle refreshes so fast. Yeah. That like I feel like like with the vaccine shit. It's like you now you sound now you look dumb as fuck if you go back and look at those fucking Randy Bly tweets. He yeah, looks yeah. dumb as fuck yeah. saying all that stuff. You know what I mean? And no but the night the lucky thing for those people is that on that subject, no, not to go we're not going back we're not going back there. Yeah. But it's like the last thing I'll say is that those people will never have to reap what they sow with that stuff. Or yeah. not yet. Yeah. I would love to see I would love to see a big wave of people saying of people posting tweets of like, look at what this guy said when he was telling forcing people to get the vaccine. That was stupid. That yeah, aged yeah. horribly. Like yeah, I would yeah. love to see that's probably not gonna happen. Yeah. They're gonna get out, and that's the thing that the woke shit always kind of gets off scot free. Yeah, when it's disproven or yeah. proven that the people behind it were like yeah. the Black Lives Matter thing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. those people were shady. Yeah, and behind that whole organization. Yeah, it like they 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 don't ever truly get like canceled or yeah. whatever, which is fine because like I don't like. I try really hard not to get excited when like the other side gets canceled because yeah, yeah. I don't like any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it is like there's always that ha ha gotcha moment. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, I, yeah. but I hate that because like I hate it when like Ben Shapiro or one of those guys is like, see what Lizzo did. Yeah, yeah. Like when he's been talking about how bad cancel culture was for like yeah, yeah. five years. Yeah, yeah. And then and then Lizzo fucking does some like shit with a banana and then he's like, see what Lizzo did. Like I I hate the gotcha. Yeah. It's like if you were really about it. You'd be like, you would be like the real, the real fucking one up on that is to be like, I don't think Lizzo should be canceled because I don't believe in cancel culture. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. They, but they take any inch they can get on yeah. the other side, which is just as bad, you know? And so it's like, I think for me, at least it depends on like how, how much cancely they are. Like if you're not canceling getting canceled, then I'm like, okay, well you shouldn't. But if, what do you mean? Sorry. Like if if they were all about like, yeah, let's take all these people down, and then they right. get taken down. And, oh, and that oh that happens a lot too. Yeah. That happens a lot with the that happens a lot with the like, um, with the I see that a lot in the metal scene too. Yeah. Where, where there's like guys, there's like guys that are like really like trying to cancel people right and yeah. then something comes up about them yeah like they posted something a long time ago and they yeah. said the n-word or something yeah, or yeah, they yeah. or they like you know beat their girlfriend up yeah you know and you're like oh you yeah. were you were what's the word i'm looking for you were uh, a hypocrite yeah piece of well shit. no yeah hypocrite piece of shit but like uh you were um, projecting what dudes with small dicks do yeah projecting yeah, yeah. Like when they drive big trucks, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're compensating. You're yeah. overcompensating. Yeah. You see that shit all the time. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and yeah, that that is kind of nice yeah. when you see that happen. That is kind of nice. Yeah. But the people that are all anti cancel culture and then they just take whatever little inch they can get on the other side. Yeah. I, I don't like that. You know what I mean? Like I thought it was fun to see Lizzo get some shit. Yeah. But j everyone thought that was fun. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. It's fun because they but, propped her well, up so much. Well, she was fat shaming her own dancers. That is hilarious. The comedy gods yeah. rewarded us with that one because yeah. that is fucking hilarious. Yeah. I tried doing some Lizzo jokes, though. They don't yeah. hit. It's punching down still. You know uh, what I mean? In uh, a weird way. It's like I, punching down and up at the same time. I hate to be the rich. one to do this to you. 
it's probably just not a good job. I've seen some. It's probably not a good job. Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, can I tell you the joke? Well, well it also got hacked, and, and, and you can tell me the joke. You tell me what you're gonna say. Uh. Well, I mean, just so many people were doing it so fast, it quickly became hacked. So like, yeah. like maybe you're just like late on the boat. But like, I, yeah, I heard, maybe. I heard David Lucas do some like Lizzo jokes. He's like, I hate that it gave like fat girls confidence. Now it's like 2 a.m. at the bar, and normally you would have gone home with one. <laughs> that is good. That <laughs> yeah. is funny. Yeah, but, but, but now they're all like, oh, I'm beautiful. I was <laughs> trying to, and maybe I just haven't. I think there's other. There's another like. Like, you know, I hate to tell you that your jokes suck. There's another hate to tell you, which is that I just yeah. haven't probably worked on it enough. Yeah. I yeah. haven't worked on it enough. Yeah. And that's probably the issue, too. Yeah. And and the time has passed now. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it was a Bud Light. It was a that's Bud Light joke. That's another thing that Be sucks. Yeah. Stuff the, moves so stuff quickly. Stuff moves quick. Yeah. So I was trying to write a joke that basically... Like I don't think what I, I I don't think what she like they're trying to cancel everybody they're even trying to come after Lizzo yeah and I don't think they should cancel Lizzo because uh, and I was like what I think should happen is I think Bud Light should partner with Lizzo right now because because they're trying to bring back like the Bud Light brand yeah, yeah. right and it's like and what she did was like the most Bud Light bro shit ever yeah, like, yeah she yeah. was making fun of fat chicks yeah yeah and and telling them to put shit in their pussies like yeah, that was yeah. pretty bud light of her to do yeah yeah yeah. so i don't know maybe i just need to work on it but yeah. but it's also shouldn't it's work on premise. it it yeah. was a good premise three months ago it's not good and it's not really that great anymore but, I mean, but meanwhile you could come up with like a new joke about like the home alone movie and 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 it would like do well right <laughs> you know, everyone's like, talking about home alone all, yeah right. like, like like it's so like like some stuff that you can like keep joking the nostalgic about forever stuff, right yeah it's weird that is super weird yeah but yeah i don't know I, I kind of rock with Lizzo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. You, you got more respect for her when you learned that she was, like, body shaming <laughs> yeah, people. And... so funny. You just can't. You can't make that shit up. Yeah. You, oh, you're too fat. You employees. girls are too fat. Yeah. And then, like, the other thing that I – the other tag I had on that joke was, like, nobody thought bananas were going to take that bitch down. Yeah. That yeah. was the last – that was the last thing yeah. that we thought. But that one, I think, is kind of hack. I think people were doing yeah, that a lot. Yeah, a lot of people were like, yeah, because she doesn't eat fruit. Right. Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of those. So yeah. it was just kind of hacky. Yeah. So you live and you learn. Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, eventually you, like, learn to, like, like dig, like – beneath the surface because like we're never all of us we're, we're not we're not going to have like unique premises it's just like how deep we how go is your it. perspective on it yeah even. so like when bill burr does a joke about the nfl we're not like oh finally a comedian talking about football right we're like i want to hear what bill burr has to say because i generally uh, like his opinion on yeah stuff because his perspective on it is funny. is unique it's not that the premise is unique it's like his take on it is deeper right so that that's what you like eventually learn that's why like everybody who like starts comedy they're like oh three minutes what is this sex you know like it, it is right. yeah it, it's just it's surface level they think it's funny but it's like you don't know how deep like this stuff goes mm -hmm. and the idea is like not to get like lost in the weeds like what i was talking about with like the manny pacquiao fight like some people get like so deep the like comics love it but you're not really gonna have like enough of a fan base to yeah yeah you have to find a way to like get like you know normies on board with it and like how to appeal to like more people yeah it's tricky man i'm it still is. i feel like uh <clears throat> i feel like i'm in a good place with where i'm at with it yeah. just knowing that like and i was explaining this they were uh a couple of filmmaker guys are working with you know alden right yeah, yeah. they're working with alden to mm -hmm. do a documentary thing about have you heard about that that's like a documentary about just austin stand yeah, up yeah. and shit yeah and i was letting them film some stuff here and they yeah. somebody dropped out for an interview so they were they're trying to get a bunch of different people's like experience yeah. about doing yeah. stand up and <clears throat> they had me and they're asking me some questions and it's like I came to the conclusion in that moment that like because of the band thing, yeah, like we just had our first big W yeah. this year, yeah. where a huge band took us on tour. Born of yeah. Osiris took us on. Tour. No shit. Yeah, we went on hell yeah. international tour with Born of Osiris. Damn. Yeah, went to Canada with Boo. Right? Nice. They plucked us. They plucked us. No nice. bias. They plucked us. It was amazing, and uh, it was a dream come true. But it took eleven years to to get there. Yeah. Right. And so, I think I have a different perspective or experience with what it actually takes yeah to grow something and get good enough yeah and do it right and like do it wrong for a long time and then yeah. do it right and then change some things we yeah. changed our name yeah we changed our style we did some make some changes right yeah yeah so i have this realistic expectation yeah of like it's gonna take 10 years 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like my hope is that when I'm 40 yeah. and you know, the band, the likelihood of the band making it is low. It, yeah. Like it is with any art form. Right. Yeah, yeah. So maybe by the time I'm Tom Segura's age, yeah. when he started getting fit, maybe, maybe then I'll be, I'll be great. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that if, if you're, I think that's, not that's it's that's a healthy not, it's a healthy not bad to say yeah that maybe i'll be great in 10 years i yeah. think that's the most realistic the that scary it, thing is when 10 years is coming and up, i'm not like, funny like me yeah. and i'm and, not funny well well i well, mean you are funny. well so i think i'm good at the art aspect of it but not good at the business side aspect of it i'm i'm like terrible at at networking and i've been getting better at that um, i don't think you're bad at that Oh, uh, there, there. Like now, like I'm getting better. Like, like working with Black Rabbit, like running a room, like starting to like produce a show. Like it's very much, especially in Austin. Like, uh, like the pandemic, like like got rid of everything here. Like the only comedy club, Cap City, that was here closed. So it was like all independently produced shows from other comedians. So it was like kind of like an Amish community, <laughs> you know. And I was used to like all my clout in San Diego, where I was getting booked all the times from like all the clubs. That, right, you that, had to start from that, the that bottom when you came here. Well, not, not just start from the bottom, but like I had to help pitch in. But like as I was saying with the Amish community, I didn't want to like you know build the barns and turn the butter. I just wanted to you know like reap all the rewards. Right. And some people can do that. I wasn't there yet, hmm. and I had this like huge ego about me. Yeah. You know, because I, I got here and everybody was like maybe like a year or two in, so it was like all these babies. I was like, oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to like do better and like get booked and blah, blah, blah. And like, that is not how this scene worked. Yeah. And so now I'm like getting into that and now I'm, I'm networking a lot better, but it just sucks to be like, cause like I have uh like merch that sells well when I get to do like a feature like weekend and stuff. It's like, if I had enough of those, I wouldn't even need to do like the video editing. Right. You know, I could make like a thousand dollars in a weekend from koozies in San Diego. No, 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 not, not oh, San Diego, oh, oh, I see but, but just here. I didn't yeah. have the koozies till like uh, this year in February. Right. But like now, like when I do like that bit and stuff, it's like, oh, okay. Um, now I just need to like get more of these opportunities. It sucks knowing I'm good enough because I've done them before and I've had success. Now I just need to know how to get enough of them. Right. There, there, there's some people you'll meet eventually like they're they're booked everywhere, but like they're not the best. No, no, nobody's having you on the show because you're the best. It's like also, are you a fun hang? Right. You know, I've also. Who do you know? Yeah. Right. Well, well, not just who do you know, but like also, um, you know, if the headliner likes to party, they like to bring people who also like to party. Hmm. You know, so I've definitely have missed out or on vice gigs. versa. Yeah. Maybe. I've, right. I've definitely missed out on things because I didn't want to go out drinking till four in the morning. Right. I wanted to just go back to the hotel room after the show. They wanted to go to a strip club. You know, I'm yeah. not like about that. Yeah. So it's also about like, like finding like the group of people that you. Like, we're we're relationship guys, dude. Yeah, yeah, that that that, that, that you gel well <laughs> yeah. with, you know. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I mean, I've even noticed that even just like like you were when you said that thing about how some guys like never get funny because they're good at the networking thing, right? I was like, that's not I, why okay. they don't get funny. They just aren't funny, but they know the business side of it. Yeah, so they're on a bunch of things. Well, that's some that is a, something that I have to be very careful about. Yeah, because I'm very good at the networking stuff yeah. and the business stuff. Yeah, and so I could easily, I think, you know, do that. Yeah, that whole grind, that whole avenue. Yeah. Or whatever, but I want to be fun. I want to learn how to fucking kill, yeah, and like actually be good and get the respect from other comedians. That's yeah. that's what I'm after. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which I feel like is more a little. It's that's better than just be like I want to fucking make money off of this, right? Yeah, yeah. And because I'm from a fucking thing where you make no money, you yeah, you I'm from metal where you fucking yeah. make no money and yeah. pr probably nobody's gonna like you. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah. you're gonna do it because you love it and yeah. you want to kill. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. we kill when yeah, we play yeah. shows. Yeah. We kill. Yeah, yeah. We killed it right before Boo every night. Yeah, yeah. We crushed. Yeah, yeah. We dominated. Yeah. And I want to yeah, do yeah. that, but in but in stand up because it's so much harder. So it's like an it's like uh, it's like a fucking you yeah. know Twinkie dangling on a on a string. It's well, like it really it makes me want to fucking just go for that. I want to I want to learn how to do that. Self awareness is going to be key in that because yeah. eventually you're going to get to a point. Um, and this is why, like, you know, a comedian's first special will be, like, really funny. But then their second special isn't. is because now they have, like, all these fans that, like, laugh at everything that they say. Yeah, their cadence. Yeah. They laugh at the cadence, right? Yeah, so you have to be, like, hard on yourself, like, about your jokes. I don't think that being good at the business side is going to hold you back at all. And in Austin, getting anywhere in stand-up, it's, like, a necessity 
to like get good at the business aspect of it right. because in terms of people that are funny there's tons of those there's so many yeah they're so funny there's yeah so many so many so many, so many really really funny people here. yeah so like you gotta like learn that business side of it it's a necessity but it's just also and like like sometimes uh i'll see this and like it's weird man <clears throat> like whew, here we go uh <laughs> A lot of we women, can cut it out if you don't want to say it. Dude. Well, no, no, I I think it's a, a fair thing to say because I've 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 said this to like female comedians before. Like a female comic will get like like booked a lot, and it's because she's hot. Yeah, but, well, like because she's hot, um, and like like bookers want to sleep with them, but because then they're getting booked a lot, they'll think it's because they're funny. And I'm like, everywhere else in the world, you know, it's because like you're hot. You know, you're getting like free drinks because you're hot. You know, you're getting in without a cover because you're hot, and then like you're getting booked on a lot of shows. I'm like, it's just the same. But with with stand up, it sucks because it's your it's your art form. So, yeah, and it's your product, right? Yeah. If you want to talk about it like business or whatever, yeah, it's your product. And so they're lying and they're they're fluffing up. You know, they're inflating the value of your product basically yeah. because of whatever they want to sleep. They're creeps. They want to sleep with you or whatever. Yeah. And then and then you're not getting real feedback. That yeah. You're not. You know. You yeah. Need to work on your shit or whatever. And then it might not even be that. It, it's like, oh well, we got to have like a woman on the show. Because, you know, they want to have, like, a diverse right. crowd and stuff. And, like, there are some, like, really funny women. So it's, like... So many. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, well, well, why don't you have women on your show? Well, because all the funny women are, like, opening for Theo Vaughn. They are, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're, like, passive the mothership and getting paid hundreds of dollars to do a show. That's why they're not at my show. I'm not paying them because I don't have money. Right. You know? Um, so, so there's all of that. But, like, it's, like, an extra thing that they have to be, like hard on themselves about um i don't think that they, and, and like in their point like they Sucks. shouldn't they shouldn't not take the opportunity because it's given to them but like also understand that they're not only getting it because they're you know funny or not because they're like so fun yeah yeah oh, that's so fucked it's yeah it's it's hard dude imagine having to deal with that yeah like is it just because I'm hot or is it funny? Like that's yeah. something we'll never have to deal with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the one blessing is of Joey being... Smith booking me at the Black Rabbit just because I'm hot. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Is yeah. that why? Yeah. <laughs> that's we'll never have to deal with that. Yeah. He doesn't do that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. we'll never have to deal with that. Like, is Alden booking me on his show just because I'm so fine? Yeah. <laughs> like that's, but that is a real concern. That yeah. Fucking chicks have to have. Yeah. But Damn. so, so like all I'm saying with that is like, don't think like, oh, well, your act is so good and you're getting booked everywhere because people get booked for other reasons. Yeah, and I was that that was the one thing I was gonna say is that even in the short time that I've been doing it, yeah. I've seen that, and that's why I was saying I need to be careful with myself. Yeah, because I am good with the networking thing. Yeah, and and I could I could end up like one of those guys, and I don't want to be one of those guys because I've already gotten opportunities yeah. that, like, the way that I look at like the stand up scene here. It's like, I want to be helpful. Like yeah. before I started doing stand up, I was yeah. doing the only thing I knew how to do that could help, which was take photos. So yeah. I was taking pictures of people yeah. and giving them to them for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and then I realized there's a lot of people doing that and yeah. like they make money off of that. Yeah. And it's like, I make my money elsewhere. So yeah. it's like it, it, when it comes to like stage time to yeah. me, it's a, like, I, I fully get how important that is for the yeah. people that are doing stand up here that gave up their lives and yeah. moved here and live in their cars like they yeah. need that fucking stage time yeah yeah and there's so when i get a five minute spot on alden's midnight show at the vulcan yeah and that just happened and it's yeah. like that's because i know alden yeah it's not because i'm funny yeah it's not because i'm good yeah you know what i mean yeah. right it's because i know alden and so it's like so i'm already seeing that happen for yeah me. so for when you put that into words and, and said it to me i was like oh fuck like i gotta make sure that i don't become one of those hacky yeah. dudes that get shit because i can fucking network and yeah i, I know i meet people make friends right yeah. and I, it's like i don't want to be that guy and stuff, yeah you know but at, and at the same time also it's like i know that there's other people that have sacrificed way more than i have to yeah. be here to do stand-up that deserve stage time yeah so it's like i'm very gracious of those i need those opportunities to get better yeah. i need to go up at the get a five minute spot and not be at an open mic and yeah. do five minutes at a yeah. show at midnight at vulcan so i can like work on my shit and get better yeah, yeah. but at the same time i 
it's like there's probably 20 guys that are grinding harder yeah there's 100 guys that are grinding harder that does that maybe deserve or need that five minutes more than i do well th- this and is it weird. was a guest spot i didn't get paid for it yeah. so it's like you know but at, i'm just saying that that's always something that i'm thinking about is like man like there's like i'm thankful for this stage time because there's people out here that are funnier than me that are like would really like this five minutes you know what i mean like, yeah but I, th- 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 this is where like people confuse effort with efficiency it's like yeah you tried really hard you didn't get anywhere <laughs> yeah like I, I could say that about like the covid stuff some people thought like oh they cracked down so hard but it didn't work it's like yeah you tried really hard but it got nowhere all the funniest dudes i know they kind of think that they're terrible at this okay because they're they keep trying to be funny like well, like what I was saying, like like with the the female comic example, like the the idea that I was getting is that they thought that their act was like rock solid. Okay. And they're like, oh, I'm getting booked because like my act but is like, like so cool. Chill, honey. You're yeah, and it's like getting, you're hot. That's ro- why it's, the guy wants to fuck you. Like, yeah, and, and 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 it's unfortunate, but like and uh, again, you know, I've seen a lot of people like overcome that thing, but it's like you have to think like, oh, how could this be funnier? Like what? How, how do I make my perspective more unique? How do I take this beyond like the surface level joke? Like I heard a a girl do a thing. She was like a like a green card wife. She had uh, fake tits, and she was like, "Oh well, at least I don't have to pay speeding tickets." And I'm like, "That's the oldest joke ever about like hot women getting out of tickets." I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like the more Hacky. interesting story is you got fake tits to become an American citizen, to like not have to take yeah, the test. Your bit is right there. Yeah I, yeah, I was like, yeah, you could either like take this test and go through like the arduous, you know, immigration process, or you could just be hot and marry into America. I was like, that, that's at least a more interesting. It's it's more self aware and funny. Yeah, right. It's a deeper story than I get out of speeding tickets. Yeah, you know. So I, I mean, I don't really have an ego. Like, I don't even think like I'm that like great just because I know so many people that are funny or above me. I mean, it's the same thing with music too. Yeah, like, that, that, that's why I default to you know like I know I've made a bunch of audiences laugh. And, like they think I'm cool. I don't care about any like self proclaimed expert. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm great. Well, and it comes. Well, that's cool. Yeah, and it com- <laughs> it, that comes back to the d- the delusion that we were yeah. talking about in the beginning of the podcast, which yeah. is like there's a lot of delusion in in the art forms and the arts. You yeah. Know, people that think and be and and like with music, I think it's because it's like and I said said have said this to no end, but music is a participation trophy sport. Yeah. Where it's good job, good set. Always. Yeah. It's always good job for trying. Good yeah. job for getting up there. Yeah. And comedy is somewhat similar. You yeah. got up there and you did it. You yeah. put your rep in. Yeah. But it's like you know when it's bad. Yeah. Because it's not hitting. Nobody's yeah. laughing at you. So you're failing. You know oh, what I mean? And so it's like that, well it's the audience. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like there's so many default like like oh it's the crowd or you like know. there's so many excuses you could make, right? Yeah. There's so many like, oh, I'm great. It's it, the audience. It is kinda hard to navigate. Sometimes there's only been one time where I can count that that's actually like where it happened and it kind of felt weird being in that spot. I don't know if you've seen the video, it's like Steph Curry dribbling. And then there's like a dead spot on the floor. And so like he misses the dribble and he goes, no, no, that wasn't me. No, I don't know about that. It was the floor. And so he's like bouncing it on the floor. He's like, see, like it bounces higher here. It like doesn't really bounce on like this part of the floor. Like it's weird to get like good to the point where it's like, oh, it's because the lights were on and the crowd didn't feel like comfortable laughing at, at jokes because the like, house everybody was, on. yeah, because everybody was looking at each other or they're like spread out. Yeah, you know it's weird that there's the like, room like, was weird. The, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's weird that there's like physical dynamics of a room that the like ceiling was too high or whatever yeah, they say. Yeah, right? yeah. So there's all kinds of stuff like that, um, and sometimes that's the case, but most of the time it's like, well, maybe that joke would have been funny later in your set when they trust you more. You know. Yeah. So there's there's definitely like you figure out like what order the jokes like like go in. Uh, but definitely, like, the death of a comic is they stop writing. I know some people that have been doing this, like, 20 years, and it's like, hey, like, the the 
things that you're joking about about the Taco Bell menu, those things haven't been on the menu since like 2007. Right, or they're back on the menu. Dude. Yeah, like, yeah. They yeah, brought yeah, they yeah, brought yeah. the Mexican pizza back. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> have you yeah. been reading up on your yeah, you research yeah, your jokes? Yeah, you do kind of have to research your old jokes. Those guys that have been doing it for a long time make sure that that shit still is relevant. Well, like it, it still does good. So it's like, yeah, you can get like a good hour and just yeah. tour with that and never make it an album and never write anything else. But you yeah. know, that, that, that might've been like the way to do things before. But I also just feel like I learned from my mistakes with the music thing. Yeah. Like I learned like, you know, when I first got into music, it's like, I felt like, you know, when you're young and you're in high school and you're listening to metal, you're like, we listen to the sickest music. There yeah. Is. Yeah. Nobody listens to cooler music than us. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you start being in a band right after high school, you're like, we make the sickest fucking music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you kind of yeah, like take yeah. that with you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, everyone in this town is this fucking dog shit. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and you yeah, kind of yeah, have yeah. this fucking, and it's like that you learn quickly in music. It's like that attitude doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. And in anything that attitude doesn't get you anywhere, but it's like, I feel like this is my first time basically starting a new art form, Yeah. you know, and trying to navigate that yeah. with this experience. And it's like, I don't want to, I know how I don't want to approach this. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I know this is gonna take a long time. Yeah. I know there's a lot of rock stars in this fucking city that have yeah. been crushing. Yeah. For a long time, and wherever they came from. Yeah. And and there's a lot of famous people here that are just like you see them at Mothership, and you're like, fuck. So one day I want to be that. I want to kill like that. So you know, and and it, but yeah. it, and it's like, and I don't want to. So I'm I'm going into this thing like more humbly and more like self-aware than I've gone into than I went into the music thing yeah and I don't know how it's gonna work out I just know that I love it and I want to kill and yeah. I know I've ma I've mastered how to kill yeah with metal yeah and I'm like I've I and I feel com comfortable saying that like yeah. if you told me there's fucking 10,000 people out there and you're up in five yeah. I'm yeah. like I'll get them all in the air yeah yeah first song yeah, yeah. they're in the air yeah yeah easy in yeah. my sleep yeah and it's like but with with comedy, one guy you know yelling at me at an open mic throws me off, and so yeah. I'm like, how do I fucking the fuck? I want to figure this thing out. Yeah, yeah. It's like right there. Yeah. Like I just have to figure it out. But it's it's gonna be it's gonna be eight years. Yeah. It's gonna be. I gotta do. You know, there's no move to Austin, start doing comedy, blow up. That that doesn't. That I mean. I mean, it it's happened to like a couple people. You don't even want it to happen that way, right? I mean, that's then, not well, the that's because that's gonna they, fuck you later. Well, they have their own challenges. Like, can they keep up? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's gonna, so it's a whole different. You write um, one good joke or something. That yeah, fucking hits on TikTok, and then yeah. it's like you're expected to be this funny guy. It's yeah, like, I don't want that either. Yeah, yeah. So then, um, what was it? Like some people like compare the laughs that they get just like like to themselves, and they're like, oh, I do well, but then. It's like the audience can make noises like you've never heard. Like I had to follow Dan Soder one time, mm -hmm. and I'm just like listening to that crowd, and I'm like, I've never heard an audience just like lose it like that. I always make the what, oh laughing at your jokes. No, no, like they're, they're they're like Dan Soder's on stage, and he's just he's just crushing so hard. Like the audience is just making noises, howling. Yeah, just and then you have to go follow it. Yeah, and I'm like, oh man, like I hope to just not lose their attention because there's no way I'm gonna dude my big kill that hard. I just had my big first one. Yeah, it, and I had to follow Cam at the Creek Open Mic. Yeah, yeah, in front of like a full room. Yeah, at uh the hottest open mic basically yeah. on Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the hottest open mic of the weekend. Yeah. Well, besides Mothership, I guess. Yeah. But it's all the overflow of Mothership. Yeah. Everybody that didn't get on the Mothership mic is at Creek. Yeah. And fucking, I, my, I wasn't even, sub you have to get on the list, right? Yeah. So once again, here I am, working the networking thing right yeah because ridley i'm with ridley yeah and ridley goes and gets us both a spot yeah. with matt yeah on the mic yeah and and he goes okay buddy you're up last you're going up after cam and yeah. i'm like M i look over and he's over there in his fucking flip-flops and i'm like motherfucker yeah i'm gonna yeah. i'm about to get my ass fucked yeah and he goes up there and just you know crushes yeah for ha and the, the thing is is like half the crowd is comics that don't give a fuck about you and, yeah and the other half are like drunk people that couldn't get into mothership so yeah. they're 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 watching you know whoever's on stage yeah and so i go up and like 
the show he was i was the last one it's yeah. like really cam closed the mic and yeah. i was like the bump on the log and yeah. they were like let's get this fucking the classical music let's get this last plays yeah let's get, get everybody out. yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what me yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and it was like in uh and i filmed it ridley said i survived which was good you know he wouldn't have lied to me yeah you know what i mean so he's like you survived i got some chuckles out of like the non-comp but it's like yeah i had my that was my first one it's like following like the hottest up and comer right now yeah and just getting fucked yeah and it's that's such a weird thing that you would never see in metal yeah where the hit where lamb of god goes up and yeah. then i gotta go up yeah and do my rinky dink fucking metal set yeah yeah that i just put together yeah. one year in yeah you know what i mean yeah, or whatever yeah. one yeah. year into touring yeah i gotta go up after fucking the hottest new metal band yeah, it, yeah. that would never happen yeah, right yeah. it's stacked that way because that's how it needs to be and yeah. it's like well, comedy is just so beautifully unforgiving in that yeah. way, dude. Yeah, I had to go after uh, Ron White because he wanted to get to oh, Terry Black's no. before they closed. Oh no! He was you like, "Yeah, didn't. I He was like, "Oh, I want to go up earlier." Because- you had to go after the after the the fucking white the white stallion the 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 dude, the, the silver stallion. He's I mean, amazing. I mean, thankfully, like the audience was so hot and like the way Hinchcliffe yeah. brought me up, like. He's like, hey, you know, like, you know, I do my Kill Tony podcast. We find like the newest like up and comers that are doing. He great. gassed you up. Yeah, nice. Like, here's here's Andrew Tarr. He threw you a bone on that yeah. one. Yeah, and so sick. I mean, I didn't do Ron White levels of crushing, but no, I mean, I you still, probably did. You still probably did, well. did great. Yeah. Um, I, the first time I saw you was at a uh, mothership. I don't yeah. remember where. I think it was in the little room. Yeah, yeah. Maybe bottom of the barrel. It's the only room I've been in. Yeah, so. I think. It was, yeah, <laughs> I saw it. that was the first time I saw you, and I was like, oh, dude. Yeah, he's, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, dude. But uh, the the comparison I'm gonna uh, make, and I, and it's weird that this is like the only like uh, reference I have to this, but like a long time ago, uh, the UK was trying to ban female ejaculation porn, <laughs> and I think it's because if that's what it looks like when a woman comes. And they realize that they've never, never made yeah. a woman come their whole life. That's awesome. And so I think people don't know, like like new comics don't know like how loud an audience can get. And so like they don't see. And this is why it's important to move to a city like where there are a lot of comedians and examples because you think like, oh, I crush. But then somebody who actually crushes goes on there. And they start making you know the audience howl Scream. and laughter. People yeah. are falling out of their chairs. The energy is electric. And it's like, oh, I still have a long way to go before yeah. I'm like that good. Exactly. Yeah. We got a lot. Of, I got a lot of work to do. Everybody does. Yeah. We guys got to keep grinding. Yeah. I think that's a good place to wrap it up, bro. Let's do it. We just crushed over two hours. Tony, are you happy? I'm happy. Tony's happy, dude. Hell yeah. Run that. <laughs>